Hi guys, uh, my name is Varvara. I'm a student of uh, Rolling Scope School, a class uh, 2020 Q1. Um, let me introduce you online conference for test presentation. Um, a lot of uh, my colleagues, uh, students, uh, will tell you about uh, different web technologies and it will be interesting. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, record all videos. Uh, so, sorry for that, but it's still a lot of exciting presentations. Keep watching and have fun with us. Thank you. Service, which helps developers uh, store and manage their code, as well as track and control changes. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for individuals and teams to use Git for version control and collaboration. Uh, without GitHub, Using Git requires a bit more technical knowledge and use of the command line. Uh, so now, uh, when we have refreshed the GitHub conception, I would like to move on GitHub features. Uh, GitHub uh, has some very useful keyboard shortcuts and features to increase productivity. Uh, from my own experience, I can judge it that all these useful things often don't fall into the field of developer's view. Uh, I will tell you about some of the most common tools which we usually need when we are working in a team. Uh, so first tool is adding a collaborator. Uh, you can add users as collaborators to your personal repository. To add a collaborator, you just need to ask for the username of the person you're inviting and then follow some easy tricks. Uh, you can see an example on this slide. Uh, public and private repositories. Uh, so, uh, a repository is like a folder for your project. Uh, your repository contains all of your project files and revision histories of each file. Uh, GitHub now includes unlimited private repositories. Uh, many developers use them to apply for a job, work on a side project, or try something in private before releasing it publicly. Uh, next tool is pull requests. Uh, pull requests uh, let you tell others about uh, changes you have pushed to a branch in your repository on GitHub. Uh, when a pull request is opened, uh, you can discuss and review their potential changes uh, with uh, your collaborators and add follow-up commits before your changes are matched into the base branch. Mm. Other contributors uh, can review your proposed changes, uh, add review comments, uh, contribute uh, to the pull request discussion, and uh, even add commits to the pull request. So on this slide, uh, you can see how to create pull request. Um, uh, code chat suggestion, uh, it is a very useful feature. Uh, when you're commenting on a piece of code in a pull request, uh, you can suggest alternative code uh, using the suggested changes feature. Uh, to make a suggestion, uh, surround a code snippet with a multi-line markdown snippet and add the text suggestion. And now, uh, when you have made the suggestion, the author of the pull request can apply it to his or her branch without the hassle of manually changing the file. Uh, jumping to a function. Uh, Code review often involves a lot of jumping between function calls and their definitions, and therefore a lot of scrolling up and down. Uh, GitHub lets you to jump to a symbol by uh, pressing key T when you're looking at files in a pull request. Uh, so next tool is issues. Uh, issues are a great way to keep track of tasks and bugs for your project. Uh, they can be shared and discussed with your teammates. A typical issue on GitHub usually contains uh, the following elements. Uh, checklists. Uh, checklists help you to coordinate and track parts of a project. Uh, assigns and mentions. Uh, you can assign up to teammates to make sure that work has an owner. Also, you can tag your issues and pull requests with labels. It allows you to quickly search for them later. And milestones. Uh, you can add a milestone to check a project as a part of the larger goal and uh, then watch your milestones progress. 
So fork in a repository. A fork uh, is a copy of a repository. Uh, fork in a repository allows you to freely experiment uh, with changes without affecting the original project. Uh, most commonly, they are used to either propose changes to someone else's project or to use someone else's project as a starting point for your own idea. Uh, so a great example of using forks is uh, bug fixes. Uh, rather than logging an issue for a bug you have found, uh, you can fork the repository, uh, make the fix, and submit a pull request to the project owner. Uh, if the project owner approves your changes, they will be pulled into the original repository. Mm, project boards. Uh, project boards on GitHub help you to organize and prioritize your work. You can create project boards for specific feature work, uh, comprehensive roadmaps, or even release checklists. Uh, with project boards, you have the flexibility to create customized workflows that will suit your needs. Uh, so project boards are made up of issues, uh, pull requests, and nodes that are categorized as uh, cards in your columns. Uh, you can drag and drop or use keyboard shortcuts to reorder cards within a column, uh, move cards from column to column, or uh, change the order of the columns. Uh, here you can see how to create project board. Uh, quick file search in repositories. Uh, so, uh, it is undoubtedly the fastest way to search uh, something in repository if you know what you are looking for. Uh, open any repository and uh, just press key T. Uh, now you can search by file name and use arrow keys to move through the search results. And uh, press enter to open the file. Uh, T navigation in the code. Uh, so, it requires an unofficial extension of Chrome. Uh, but with it, you will get a slightly more familiar way of navigating through the code uh, that it used uh, in the default interface. Uh, the Octo tree extension will allow you to navigate GitHub repositories by viewing the tree structure in the sidebar, which is similar to what you have in applications like Visual Studio Code. Uh, GitHub API. Uh, so GitHub API uh, is an interface uh, provided by GitHub for developers who want uh, to develop uh, the applications targeting on GitHub. Uh, you can search repositories, issues, uh, commits, and other information about users. And uh, last but not least, uh, GitHub pages uh, let you turn GitHub repositories into websites to show the portfolio, projects, uh, the documentation, or anything else you want to share with others. Uh, so, uh, it was the first part of GitHub features. Uh, we reviewed some of the most common tools, which we usually need when we are working in a team. I hope that now you better understand all the power and all the possibilities that GitHub offers us. Uh, please feel free to contact me if there are any questions, and uh, thank you for your attention. And now, if you have any questions, I can try to answer on it. So you can ask something if there are any questions. Hello. Uh, you've mentioned uh, GitHub projects, uh, and have you ever used it? Please tell us. Uh, no, I have never used it before, but uh, I think uh, on uh, on the task uh, Rolling Scope English, I will use it with my team, and uh, I will uh, try to categorize my cards and uh, get benefit from it. Uh, do you know anything uh, about uh, Trello or Jira and, and so on? Mm, to tell the truth, I have never heard about it before. Okay, thank you. Hello. 
Thank you for your presentation, Dmitry. Very glad to hear you, not to just read you in the chat. Uh, what system lies under the hood of uh, GitHub projects? Do you know? Have you ever heard about Kanban? No, I have never heard about it. Really. Okay. And uh, another question. I, I like to ask some questions no one can prepare for. Because Do you have enough sleep, frankly? <laughs> I, uh, sometimes I haven't enough sleep because of our tasks. Yeah, um, because you're an RSS student, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so, what was uh, the most uh, interesting task in uh, this enrollment? Uh, for me, the most interesting task, uh, task was uh, fancy weather. Uh, I have only four days to do it, but uh, I was doing it at night and uh, I finished it uh, after one day um, of the flying. But uh, it is my favorite task. Okay, thank you. So, uh, thank you, Dima. Uh, it was great. And uh, let me introduce Adele. She will be next. Please mute yourself. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, do, do you see me? Hi. Hello. Yeah, sure. Okay, I will share my desktop one moment. Okay. <clears throat> uh, hello, everybody. I am Adele. I am a freelancer and rolling school, school, school student, and my theme is GitHub Features. Um, as you know, the previous theme was the same. It was uh, GitHub Features. So I and Dmitry we decide to make part one. And here is part two. <laughs> um, so I would like uh, to share just a few GitHub features, uh, which I think uh, could make your life uh, easier. Uh, so, and I think, and I find by myself it uh, quite useful. So, the first one is a uh, GitHub Learning Lab. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you are not good enough with uh, GitHub, you can go here and uh, uh, instead of traditional tutorial, GitHub Learning Lab is a, a, an application which gives you a learning experience uh, which you could can actively participate in. Uh, so he, um, here is um, a friendly board which take, take you through a series of fun labs that will give you the skill you need and sh share uh, with you um, a very nice um, and helpful feedback. On the screen, you can see um, the few courses on GitHub Learning Lab. You can find seven learning paths and more than 30 courses. For example, introduction to GitHub, GitHub pages, um, how, to moving, how to move your project to GitHub, and, and a lot of else. Um, so here is course section. So you can learn more or start from, from here. and. Uh, on this slide, you can see how it, it is inside. I um, recommend Lee advise it to, to um, know, to uh, go to this course to know more about GitHub. <clears throat> so next one is GIST. Uh, GIST is a uh, GitHub open facility which um, allows you to host code snippets. Uh, so this on this slide you can see how it's look like inside. So you could uh, pay, paste in code, and you can uh, do it uh, directly on GitHub and also th uh, through your idea. So on the slide you can see it's um, uh, PHP uh, Storm. So you can you need just to uh, select uh, some code you would like to to share. Press right mouse and uh, create GIST. So it's very very easy. <clears throat> also on GIST, there are a variety of languages, 
uh, there are more than 200, uh, 200 languages and also you, you can find maybe some full, um, helpful some helpful examples for yourself. Um, and next one, it's uh, keyboard shortcuts. And I think it's really very important um, because uh, when you start to learn uh, some uh, new program or application, when you know some short um, keyboard shortcuts, your um, uh, wor work become faster. So first one is S, it is search. So you press S and just uh, navigate through all your uh, through all um, uh, GitHub and repository. Uh, next one is W. So um, W help you uh, to check out from the branches. So you you will um, go to branch finder. L when you press L and then will open small window and, and there you have to uh, put some number and if you are inside the file, uh, you will go directly to, to the line of code. I think it's very nice and I use it for myself. And uh, the last one, and not, not everybody know about it, about it, it's a question mark. Do you know that if you're on some uh, GitHub page and you can be, on dashboard or you, you could be on some um, in your repository or in file if you press question mark it will open a menu especially main menu of all shortcuts which you can use especially on this page mm. and little bit about your shortener not everybody knows that github has its own uh, it's very easy git point io uh, and uh, here you can enter especially github link and it will um, give you back a five just five digits of a github link which you could could share uh, next one is project boards um dimitri in previous presentation also told about about project boards and i would like just to share one thing that uh, do you know that when you make this project board uh, and make some task you could very easily just in in a Mm. two clicks make it issue so it's very um, nice um, and very uh, easy so you just make some task um, convert it to issue and uh, next you you have to choose the, the repository so I, I think it's very helpful if you um, uh, develop some application little bit <clears throat> about dark theme uh, do you know that through um, 2013, users of GitHub ask about uh, dark theme? And do, do you know that the issue is still open? <laughs> so, um, in, uh, in uh, April this year, on official blog of GitHub, uh, they um, advise to use an official dark theme extension, the browser extension so um, it's a little bit worried of installation uh, but i think you can you can understand so you just to um, download uh, and install styles user css and you will get it i strongly recommend it uh, to to healthy uh, to, to be more healthy with your eyes a little bit about safe replies mm. so if you just start your project and not uh, deep, uh, not uh, dive deep, deep in uh, um, optimization, so there is safe replies. For example, if you have um, some issues and uh, the questions are the same, you can make uh, safe replies. So just to make small, small answers and uh, then just to select by control one and control two, just select. Um, answer and to, to be faster a little bit about notification when you work in a, in a team and you have to be you have to know what's going on with your project you could use browser notification it's notify of github it's very small nice icon on the top of your browser so you, you will be you will know how much a notification you have and you don't need to go all the time and to check your github <clears throat> little bit about uh, code uh, snippets um, it's not much a secret uh, that um everyone um, it's not no everybody everybody 
that you can li link specific lines of code by clicking the, the line number when you are viewing the, the file. For example, you um, want to share a link and at the end you add hash and seven and um, the person when um, the person when looks through your file, um, he will go directly to this line. Um, so, and yeah, you can see the, um, on the slide, so, you will go to the directly link, but if uh, that file is edited, deleted, or renamed, um, this link will no longer work. So, if you want to all time to go directly to this link, you have to um, copy a permanent link. You can see it, it here, and uh, you know that uh, it will be a very nice um, visualization of this code snippet. So, it's very nice to share. Uh, about emoji, uh, a little bit. Actually, you can show emojis on GitHub. Uh, you can see emoji cheat sheet. So, and this is the link. Uh, and if you go directly to this URL, you just uh, copy, you click and copy, and you can share inside your repository, wiki, or issues. And um, it has, uh, yes, it has very, uh, very, um, a nice syntax so for example for smile it's it's very nice you can remember it and type it for yourself <laughs> and one very useful repository i'm sure that you will like it <clears throat> so it's more scored by repeatedly slamming your laptop <laughs> so uh please be careful so you can you can uh, try it by, by yourself or with your laptop in this uh, repository. So you download, put a go and download this information. Its, it's name is Open and Shut. Uh, really, it uh, was uh, just uh, a few GitHub features I would like to share, and uh, uh, you couldn't uh, imagine the amount of it. So let's code and open more GitHub features for for ourselves. Thank you. Uh, if you have uh, questions, please ask. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Oh, of course, we have questions. Uh, do you know who, I mean, what company is the owner of GitHub right now? As I remember, Microsoft bought it. Ah, yeah, you know this. Okay. <laughs> And uh, after after they do um, after they do it, they open they make a lot of nice features for free, so, like teamwork, collaboration. Okay. Uh, I hear in in your English, I hear uh, some British accent sometimes some words uh, you pronounce them with british accents why is it so it, it it's okay it's perfectly okay i mean I, i'm not criticizing you but why is it so did you learn english uh, somewhere where the teacher was a, a, a british a brit a fan of britain I think uh, I think I um, have this accent because of school. So they try to uh, study out with uh, British. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe more, more right pronunciation than uh, American. Maybe because of this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, Pavel, or anyone else. Okay, thank you. Questions? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, especially for your webcam. Because I see that not everybody has it. So, and you've described a lot of feature. And could you please uh, share with us your personal experience using it? What did you use, and uh, will you use it, and so on? Something like that, please. Uh, mostly all the features I um, told about, I use it. Um, uh, maybe not the issue because I don't develop a huge project. Um, uh, huge, I don't develop huge application, uh, but uh, for example, now we have a um, task and I advise um, um, my, uh, my teammates to, to use, um, for example, these uh, project boards and uh, also I use these short, short, short cards and I try 
GitHub Learning Lab, and I like it uh, much. So because of this, I advise it. I don't use GIST, but when I while make, making this present this presentation, I open it and I open it for myself, and I think it's really good. <laughs> I like it very much. Okay, okay. Uh, I beg your pardon, but gist, as far as I know, and digit, not digit. Uh, I've heard it in your presentation that you've used uh, not right pronunciation. You said gist, but it should be gist, as far as I know. Thank you so much. And not digit, digit, but digit, uh, digital, and so on. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to know if you <clears throat> have you ever tried a dark theme. Uh, and why is it is it so popular? As far as I uh, as I heard from you, uh, dark theme is uh, very very popular. I think because uh, um, most of uh, developers they like um, dark theme in in their um, uh, idea idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and uh, because of this, when they um, uh, go from dark um, screen to the light screen of a GitHub. They uh, it uh, could really damage your eyes if you work on night. And because of this, so so um, many users ask about about this d d dark theme. And, and um, do you use it? You, you know, not yet. <laughs> not but yet. Try. But I, I plan to. Uh, why? Because a lot of tasks. <laughs> uh, no, I I mean that you will try. Uh, yeah, yeah, later. Yes, no, I, okay. I plan to try later because now I have, have uh, we have a lot of tasks to do, and uh, you know. It's... Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Adele. Um, is Agnia here? Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Good I'm luck. <laughs> So, do you see a picture? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so, hello everybody. My name is Agnia and my topic is CSS Grid Layout. Uh, I'm a student of the JavaScript front-end uh, course of the Roland Scopes community. Also, I work as a Spanner developer. Uh, so, my main work is related to writing the backend uh, but uh, I was always interested in uh, the front end and wanted to develop in different uh, directions. Uh, so let's get it started. Uh, CSS Grid Layout is the most powerful layout system available in CSS. Uh, it is a two dimensional system, uh, meaning it can handle uh, both columns and rows. Unlike uh, Flexbox, uh, which work only in one direction. Uh, you work with uh, grid layout by applying CSS rules both to a parent element, which becomes the grid container, and uh, to elements children, which becomes a grid item. Mm. Uh, CSS has always used to lay out our web page, uh, but it's never done a good job for it. Uh, so we use different technologies like tables, uh, floats, positioning, inline blocks. Uh, but all of uh, these methods were essentially hacks and uh, left out a lot of uh, functionality. Uh, Flexbox helped out, but like I said previously, it worked only in one dimensional. Uh, so Grid is the first CSS model created uh, specifically to solve the layout problem. We've all been hacking out, uh, hacking our way around for as long as we've been making websites. Uh, so let's talk about terminology of this topic. And uh, first will be grid container. Uh, grid container is the element on which property display grid is applied. Um, so in this example, element with class container is a grid container. Uh, grid item, it is a children of grid container. 
Uh, here you can see uh, element with class item, which will be grid item, but uh, element with class sub, sub item uh, isn't a grid item uh, because it is inside item. Uh, grid line. Uh, grid line is uh, the dividing line uh, that make up the structure of the grid. Uh, grid cell. Grid cell is space uh, between uh, uh, two row and two column grid lines. Uh, grid track. Uh, grid track is a space between two grid lines. Uh, grid area. Uh, grid area is the total space surrounded by uh, four grid line. Uh, so you can create a grid container uh, by setting the display property with a value of grid or inline grid. Uh, so uh, when you uh, set property display grid, like in uh, the left example, uh, it will uh, generate a block level grid, but uh, property inline grid uh, generate an inline grid. Uh, explicitly set a grid uh, by creating columns and row with the grid template columns and grid template rows properties. So in our first example, we set uh, grid template row properties and um, track size uh, can be not negative, length value, like pixels, percent, etc. So here you can see four rows, but uh, value set only for the first uh, two rows, uh, which means that uh, uh, for other row, um, um, height uh, defined by the content of these rows. And uh, in our second example, we set property grid template columns. Here we use FR, unit and uh, fr is calculated um, a unit uh, which help create flexible grid tracks uh, and uh, when we combined with other unit fr is calculated based on the remaining space um, Track size can be defined to have minimum and maximum size uh, with the min max function. And this function accepts two arguments. The first is the minimum size and the second is uh, the maximum size. Um, so uh, here in our first example, we set uh, minimum uh, row size 100 pixels and maximum row size outer. In the second uh, example, we also set uh, the size. Uh, we can use repeat function, and uh, this is useful for grid uh, with items uh, with equal size for many items. As a repeat notation, accept two arguments. First, uh, represent the number of times uh, the defined tracks should repeat, and the second is track definition. Uh, grid gap uh, uh, create uh, gutters between columns and row. Uh, grid gap size uh, value can be any non negative length value. Uh, now let's talk about uh, aligning grid items. Uh, so justify items and justify self align item around, uh, along the row axis and align items align self uh, align items along the column axis. Here you can see a uh, value of uh, these properties. And uh, here you can see examples of aligning grid tracks. Uh, and uh, we will talk about uh, uh, justify content uh, space between, space evenly, and uh, space around. Uh, 
um, because uh, they have uh, some similar um, properties. Uh, so when we use space around, the remaining space of the grid containing is distributed and applied to the start and uh, end of each contract. When we use space between, the remaining space is distributed between the column track. And when we use space inly, the remaining space is distributed where the space between the column are equal to the space at the start and uh, end of the road track. Uh, so here we can see an example. Uh, when we create a grid, uh, we create a grid container with class wrapper. And uh, here you can see display grid properties. Also, we set display grid 10 pixels, which create a gap between rows and columns. Oh, <laughs> and uh, uh, here we set grid display columns. And uh, uh, you can see box with class A. And in our properties, we displayed green co columns using slash, uh, which means that it uh, start um, uh, on call, call one start and end with call uh, three start. Uh, so it takes uh, not one column. And uh, the last not, but not least is the browser support. Here you can see information from uh, Canon use Chrome. And uh, as uh, of March of 2017, most uh, browsers support for CSS grid. Um, and uh, it is the time to build with, uh, the time to build with grid is now. Uh, thank you for attention. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, could I ask you, do you use uh, GRID inside uh, your projects? Uh, no, I don't use GRID, didn't use GRID before. So that's why I uh, chose this topic because uh, I was interested in this topic, in this technology. And now in uh, fancy weather task, I used GRID. That's great, thank you. Hello, uh, I've read your CV and you, uh, you surely have this question on any job interview. You have uh, incomplete higher education. Uh, do, do you still study or you drop it? Uh, yes, I still study, but uh, I finished college a year uh, ago and started working. Uh huh. I see that you're a ASP.NET developer. Yes. 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 Uh, do you have any experience with front end on your uh, on your current position? Uh, I work uh, in uh, not big company, so from time to time, I uh, um, have experience with task uh, with uh, front end. But uh, it's a simple task. Uh, but I have some experience, yes. Thank you. Thank you for attention. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it was uh, cool. Uh, let me introduce next speaker. It's Taras. Are you here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, thank you. You can start. Um, one second. Um, uh, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, let's start. Uh, my name is Taras. Um, uh, my topic for presentation was TypeScript. Um, so, um, there are, uh, there are many ways to protect your code in the front-end world. For example, it is possible to write unit tests using Jest and Enzyme. We can use linters like ESLint and StyleLint, but 
this is a check of older of already written code. Uh, we need a tool that will allow us not to check the finished code, but uh, which will uh, I'm sorry uh, allow, uh, uh, but which will allow us uh, to write code with less number of mistakes. There is such a tool, and it is called TypeScript. Uh, what is TypeScript in general? Um, Wikipedia says that it is an independent programming language that extends the capabilities of JavaScript. Um, the, the TypeScript developer is Anders Helsberg, who previously created Turbo Pascal, Delphi, and C Sharp. Uh, by the name, TypeScript differs from JavaScript by the word type. Uh, typing in JavaScript is dynamic, and the type of variable uh, defined is defined not at the time not at the time when variable is created, but later at the moment when we put some value into it. Moreover, this type may change in the future. For example, we can create a number um, uh, and then uh, change it to a string and then change it to an array. This leads to serious troubles in large projects. In TypeScript, on the other hand, typing, typing is static. What is static typing? As the main difference between statically typed and dynamically typed languages is how they validate data, uh, data types. Uh, statically typed languages uh, require the programmer to define data types before using them, and they cannot be changed later, while in dynamically typed languages this is not necessary. Mm. And it is a completely different approach, different approach. In any moment, we know which data type is in which variable, and it makes easier to read the code and makes faster to write the code. It makes easier refactoring, improves the work of tips in your IDEs, and the most convenient TypeScript compiler uh, will not uh, allow you to compile broken code if there is an error in it. This cuts off most of errors uh, that are often meeting when we when we write in code in JavaScript. Uh, TypeScript is a kind of JavaScript add-on. This means uh, this means that uh, it not only supports type checking but also uh, allow us to work with features of E6 and E7. The TypeScript compiler compiled the code into pure JavaScript that can run in any browser. Well, as bonuses, we get the full functionality of classes with inheritance, access modifiers, decorators, interfaces, enums, and etc. Let's look on the, at the features of TypeScript syntax. In many ways, it is similar to JavaScript, but uh, has its own differences. The first difference that I want to consider is data types. We will not delve into the system, uh, into the type system, because it is very flexible. And uh, we will limit ourselves uh, only with some basic features. Uh, uh, basic types. Uh, TypeScript supports the same types uh, that exist in JavaScript, but in a more convenient way. Um, this is how a variable is declared in JavaScript. And this is how it looks in TypeScript. As you can see, the only difference is that TypeScript, after the variable declaration, expects an indication of its type. In this case, it is string. Uh, uh, currently, the following data types exist in, in TypeScript. Uh, the first of them is Boolean. Uh, it is using to represent Boolean values, true or false. Uh, the next is number. Uh, it uses to represent integers of floating point numbers. The next is string. It uses uh, to represent the text data. Um, in TypeScript, um, null and undefined uh, have their own data types. Um, array types uh, in TypeScript can be written in one of two ways. In first ways, in first way, we use following syntaxes. Uh, we write basic type, basic type, and uh, square brackets. Uh, in the second way, we use the universal array type, array, and uh, in uh, arrow brackets, uh, basic type. Uh, object um, using for in TypeScript, uh, it using for a representation of a non-primitive. Uh, type uh, that is not boolean, uh, that is uh, that is not boolean, number, string, null, and undefined. Uh, you can create your own types of objects. Uh, in TypeScript, the type operator is reserved 
uh, for, the, for it, it looks like this. Mm. Uh, never, never using to represent the type of values that will never execute. Usually, this type is set to a function that uh, throws some kind of error. Uh, void uh, using when uh, there is no type at all. Uh, usually, it's used for functions that return nothing. Um, any um, uh, using to represent the types of variables which we don't know, um, values may come from uh, dynamic content uh, like user, uh, or, or like from user or like from the third path library data. Uh, also, uh, any can be used in arrays where values, uh, where contained uh, values of different types. Uh, in TypeScript, there is a type union. It is possible to uh, unit types using the following statement. You can also set variables of your own types interfaces. Um, if a variable is not uh, set to any type, TypeScript will define it automatically. The second difference um, that I want to consider is functions. Um, Functions are the fundamental building block of any JavaScript application. This is how you create abstraction layers that imitate classes, hide information, and modules. TypeScript adds some new features to the standard JavaScript functions so that, that uh, it is easier to work with them. Let's look at some of them. Uh, this is how looks function declaration. We can add types to each of uh, parameters. Uh, and uh, then to the function itself to add the return type. Uh, TypeScript can determine the return type by looking at the return statement. For functions that return nothing, the already considered types never and void are used. Sometimes we need to define some uh, variable as a function, so um, there is um, function types, uh, function type in TypeScript, uh, and this is how it looks. Um, a function type has two parts: uh, the type of state, the type of the argument, and the type of the return value. We write um, parameter type types in the same way as a parameter list, giving each parameter name and type. The type of uh, return value is set through operator equal and error like an uh, error function functions in JavaScript between the parameters and the return value. This is a required, this is a required part of uh, function type. So if uh, the function does not, uh, doesn't return value, uh, you must use the void type. Um, usually the type of a function is specified when creating the type of an object or class. Um, and uh, the last thing that I want to consider with you in functions is optional and standard parameters. Uh, in TypeScript, each parameter is required for a function. It means that the number of arguments passed to the function must match the number of parameters specified when defining the function. In JavaScript, each parameter and users can leave um, it as they want. Um, we can get this functionality in TypeScript by adding an operator question to the end of the parameters that we want to make optional. Um, the, third, uh, the third difference that I want to consider is classes. Um, traditional JavaScript uses prototype-based functions and inheritance to create uh, reusable components, but it may seem a little inconvenient for programmers are more comfortable using an object-oriented approach uh, where classes inherit uh, functionality and objects are created from these classes. Uh, starting with ECMAScript uh, 2015, you can create your own application in JavaScript using an uh, object-oriented approach. TypeScript uh, improves um, the possibilities of writing object-oriented uh, code in JavaScript. It supports such features as access modifiers interfaces. Um, let's look at uh, a simple class uh, example. The syntax is the same as um, when we are writing 
a class in JavaScript except for specifying the required type in the construct. Um, let's uh, speak about access modifiers. Uh, the TypeScript, it, it is um, the TypeScript feature that more flexible than in JavaScript. Uh, first of modifiers uh, that I want to consider is public. Um, if you are familiar with classes in other languages, you may uh, you may notice that in the example above, uh, we didn't have uh, to use the word public to achieve this. For example, uh, C sharp requires that each member be that each member must mark marked uh, as public. In, type, in TypeScript, each member is public by default. You can mark the public member explicitly. We could uh, write an animal class, uh, uh, how we see in previous example, as follows. Uh, second of modifiers is private. Mm. TypeScript has its own way of declaring a member as private. It cannot be accessed from outside its containing class. Sort modifier is protected. The protected modifier uses in the same way as the private modifier with the exception that members declared protected can also be accessed in classes that inherit the current. TypeScript has um, the ability to create abstract classes. Abstract classes are the base classes from which other classes can be inherited. Uh, can be inherited. Of these classes, instances can, cannot be created. Abstract class may contain implementation details for its members. Uh, the abstract keyword is used to define abstract classes as well as for abstract methods in an abstract class. Abstract uh, methods in abstract class that are marked as abstract uh, don't contain an implementation and must be implement implemented uh, in inherited classes. And the last um, things in the, uh, that I want, uh, and the last feature that I want to um, consider is uh, interfaces. Um, the interface defines the properties and methods that uh, the object must implement. In other words, an interface is a definition of a custom data type, but without an, but without an implementation. In this case, the interfaces in TypeScript, in TypeScript are similar to the interfaces in Java and C Sharp. Interfaces are defined using the interface keyword. First, uh, let's define a simple, uh, let's look how defines a simple interface. Uh, the interface defines two properties, uh, ID which is um, of type, uh, which type, <laughs> which has type number and uh, name which has type string. Um, <clears throat> uh, now we use it to define the object. Um, employer is an ordinary object with the exception that it is uh, implement interface I user. Moreover, this implementation puts some uh, limitations on employer. So employer must implement all the properties and methods of the I user interface. Therefore, when defining employer, this object must uh, necessarily include the ID and name properties. Uh, interfaces can be implemented not only by object, uh, objects by all, but also by classes. To do this, uh, use the implements keyword. Um, the user class implements the, the user class uh, implement uh, implements the Mm, I user interface. In this case, the um, I user class must define all the same properties and functions that are in I user. The Tom object, um, the Tom object is both uh, a user object and an I user object. Um, interfaces uh, like classes can be inherited. After interface, the I, after inheritance, the iCar interface will also have uh, all those properties and functions that are defined in iMovable. Uh, and then the car um, uh, class that oh, 
I, I made the mistake. Sorry. Um, Okay, Paras, uh, can I ask you a question? So because we have timing and uh, just need to ask for speaking another one presenter. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, I have two questions for you. Um, first of all, can you recommend any resource or resources to learn more about uh, TypeScript, uh, except documentation, of course? <laughs> Um, um, I look uh, the um, lessons on YouTube, um, so I think it's enough because it is very similar to uh, on JavaScript. So uh, to use it, um, it's not it's not hard. You only write uh, it, it. It gives you possibilities to write. Uh, no, to, to make um, less mistakes, uh, you, you, every time you know which uh, type of variable you use. You, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to uh, understand it simply, simpler to you, but um, you can, you, you, you can try to, you can try to, to use it, and you understand me. Oh, okay. Thank you. It was nice. Uh, and have you ever used uh, TypeScript in your projects? In my uh, in big uh, tasks, I don't use it, but uh, I um, but I um, solve the simpler. Uh, I, I I try. Uh, I solve the simpler ta not tasks. Uh, um, the, the Dutch. I don't know how it's in English, uh, so um, it's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you so much. It was uh, can I can I ask you please oh, okay. a quick question? Uh, how do you think? Thank you for your presentation, of course. How do you think does TypeScript support all the principles of object-oriented programming? Uh, no. Uh, um, uh, does JavaScript support all the principles of uh, object-oriented programming? Uh, then? No, no. But TypeScript is more. Uh, uh, JavaScript. JavaScript. I, I think. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you. So it's no. Okay. I want to. Okay. Okay. I want to Go tell ahead. you about uh, inheritance that uh, that TypeScript can't uh, support uh, the um, <laughs> I, I don't know this word in English множественное uh, наследование. There is only uh, inherit. Uh, there is uh, only oh. prototypal inheritance, but in fact, JavaScript uh, and TypeScript uh, as well, uh, they do support the main principles of pro object-oriented programming. Just a remark: it, it's not uh, like oh, you made a mistake. Go. Uh, Go and get away. No, no, no. It's just a question. Uh, there can be a correct or incorrect answer. It's just uh, to to learn. Uh, do you understand what uh, we ask uh, or you don't? So don't don't worry. There are um, no there mm -hmm. are no correct or incorrect questions. Mm -hmm. All we want to know is how you understand. English language. That's it. Um, okay. Thank you. Can, thank you. Can Can I ask to? Can I make? Can I ask? Um, I'm sorry. It's time. You should stop right yeah, now. Yeah. The time is up yeah. uh, because the next presenter is waiting. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to announce some. Uh, not announce, but ask you, please, everybody who has web camera, please use it. It's very important to see that you're uh, talking by yourself. Uh, so, Angelina, or how it pronounced, are you ready? Uh, yes, I'm ready. Okay, I hear you. Uh, shall I turn on the video?
Uh, yes, sure. You if, can. if you can, please. Sure. It will just benefit. Yes. Okay. Hello. Hi. Um, can you start sh screen sharing? Yes. yes. Oh. Wait. Sorry. <sighs> I have some problems with sharing my screen because it is my new laptop and it, I don't know how to share it. Can I wait a minute, please? Are you sure? Uh, do you see? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's start. Uh, my name is Angelina and um, the theme of my presentation is React. And what is React? React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. It came into existence in 2011 when software engineer at Facebook created this library. Where it can be used? React is used for building dynamic component, and for these purposes, it is a very effective tool. And what do I mean by dynamic? Uh, for example, users start searching some info at the website, and after entering a request, it appears a list based on the information contains in the request. In other words, it's modification of element while users interact with it. Is React popular? I made a comparison of React, Vue, and Angular with the help of Google Trends. And as you can see on slide, React community is bigger and React is more popular nowadays. And which companies use React? Of course, it is Facebook, Instagram, Netflix, Dropbox, and so on. Uh, now let's talk about pros and cons of React and the first Plus, it is that React is easy to learn and use. React comes with a good supply of documentation, tutorials, training resources, so any developer with a good JavaScript background can easily understand Re um, React and start creating apps with the help of this library. Reusable components, a React app made up of a multiple component and each component responsible for outputting a small piece of HTML code. So this component can be uh, reused wherever you need them and it helps to make your app easy to develop and maintain. Performance enhancement. Um, Many developers face this problem when updating DOM slow down the performance of the app and React solves this problem with the help of a virtual DOM. Uh, scope for testing the codes. Um, React code is easy to test and the biggest community at code owned and maintained by Facebook. The fact that Facebook maintain React means um, that React will be always uh, modern and up to date, so uh, many companies will use it and big community helps you to solve your problem. For example, you face with some problem and some developer already solve it and for example, uh, wrote an article about this and you can search in in, for example, in Google, and your development will, will be more faster. Now let's talk about cons. Uh, the first minus it is high pace of development. It is advantage and disadvantage both uh, because for some development or developers, it can be hard to adopt some new technologies and relearn some new things. Uh, poor documentation because of high pace of development, it is difficult uh, some times to make proper documentation, but I want to say that it happens very rarely. Incomplete development tool, it means that, it means that uh, sometimes you need to install some node models, packages for um, solving your problem, for example, React Router DOM. And React is too flexible. It is a minus for novice programmers because you can solve your problem in uh, different ways and you don't know which one is uh, right, but it works, it's, but it can lead to code complexity. Um, now let's talk about components. Component, it is a piece of user interface. Uh, React com com uh, component is reusable, uh, isolated, and compose the app. I want to uh, show what is component with the help of um, page on Twitter. As you can see on slide, this is navigation bar, uh, profile, feed, tweet, and the whole structure of the app will be the following. Um, navigation bar, profile, feed, 
tweet and tweet component com um, con contains like component. Uh, now we talk about virtual DOM. Um, operation with virtual DOM is a heart of interactive web, but also it is a very slow operation and React solves this problem with the help of virtual DOM. Um, virtual DOM is uh, like a lightweight copy of real DOM and um, when you changing some things in virtual DOM is more faster because nothing can drawn on screen. In, on screen and how it works. When you render a JSX element, React start comparing um, um, object, uh, start comparing page uh, uh, with the snapshot that was taken right before the updates and it mm, makes the performance more uh, faster. Um, Oh, sorry, I forgot to show you my presentation, but yeah, it's this. Uh, now let's talk about JSX. Uh, JSX is a syntax extension to JavaScript, and um, you can use HTML code inside of this um, fu render function, and JSX gets compiled to uh, React DOM <coughs> render function. Sorry. Um, also, I want to say that JSX um, can be used not only uh, in React, but this pair works very effective. And now let's talk about state and props. State a prop and props is an uh, input data for rendered function in JavaScript, and they have uh, common features. They are both plain JavaScript object, changes trigger a render update, and they are both deterministic. Now let's talk more about props. Props and their common configuration, uh, component configuration, and they are received from the parent. And as far as the components receive the, um, receive the props, they, it cannot change it. So um, state of props is immutable. Uh, uh, property is based to the component, uh, like um, argument is based to a function. And here you can see a simple example of props. And states, states like um, props, they hold information about uh, in, um, components. And by default, component uh, has no state. And we use state when we um, need to component to keep track of information between renderings and um, component itself can create, update and use state. A slide you can see a uh, simple example uh, when we can use uh, state. Here we got a button that keeps track of how many times you cl have clicked it. And um, the last I want to say that uh, the difference between uh, state and props, the state is creating in the component and the state is changeable. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it was impressing. So, uh, have you used uh, React for uh, RS uh, tasks? Um, to be honest, I never use React because I'm a novice programmer. Uh, these courses, it is the first exam uh, experience for me in programming. And uh, I had an idea to start uh, uh, using React in fancy weather task, and uh, I wrote my mentor that can I use it, but uh, she said that I'm not allowed. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, okay. And please tell me, what do you study? I'm a student of law faculty. I see, I see. And uh, could you please uh, tell me why you're interested in programming? Um, I tried some... Um, um, uh, in uh, um, in the autumn, I started uh, watching some videos about uh, HTML, and it was very interesting for me. And um, I thought that it may be a good idea to start creating something like that. And my boyfriend also is a programmer, uh, a front-end developer, and he um, showed me how it can be. Yeah. <laughs> 
does he help you a lot? No, <laughs> to be honest, no. Nice we argue so much about this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, we uh, we should wait for next speaker, Ekaterina. Uh, are you here? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, okay, you can you? Uh, I <laughs> I'm hearing you. <laughs> so, uh, can you uh, share your screen uh, and the uh, camera? Second. Uh, here, camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank here you. <laughs> it's nice to and see you. And here is uh, just a second. Share screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen nice. shot? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, my name is Ekaterina Karakulina, or just Kate, you can call me. And my topic is about programming principles. So let me begin with such simple question, who is programmer and what does he do? Programmer is the person who creates code. So we can say that programmer is the person who is coding. Really? But maybe he is programming? So what is the difference between these two words? Coding and programming are two most important approaches in software development industries. Coding is actually the process of translating code from one language to another one, to some special machine understandable commons, like binary language. Coding can be called as a um, subset of programming because it's actually its initial step. On the other hand, programming is the process of developing machine executable program, which can be executed without any errors. So let's see the features of coding and programming. Here you can see the table, comparison of coding and programming. On the left side is information about coding. On the right side, information about programming. Let's begin with definition. As I already said, coding is a process of translating code from one language to another one using some specific language. Programming is the process of developing fully functional software solution. What skills do we need for coding and programming? Let's begin with coding. Uh, as we know, computer or machine cannot interact with human I'm sorry, Kate. So the... uh, can you yeah. switch on your camera? It's, oh. it's just switching on. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. Thank you. I think it was, uh, it was turned on. <laughs> Just a second, yeah, yeah, it's turned on. Uh, so here you can see the table, comparison of coding and programming. Let's begin with definition. As I already said, coding is the process of creating and writing code, translating it from one language to another one, while programming is the process of building fully functional software solution. What skills do we need for coding and programming? Uh, as I already said, uh, just a second. <laughs> Machine on computer cannot, intera cannot interact human communication, so the main work of coder is to translate some software uh, product requirements into machine commands using some specific language syntax like Java syntax or JavaScript syntax or some other language syntax. While programmers used to analyze and conceptualize some program and even de deal with some problems which can occur due to this process. Tools. In case of coding, one just deals with code, so his main work is just know some ideas or text editors. Programmers used to, uh, should use some analysis tools, modeling programs, and even some frameworks for creating code or testing it. So in conclusion, we can say that coding is a subset of programming, while programming is a superset of coding. And while studying some programming language, it's wise not just try to become a coder, but reach the highest point to become a programmer. And one of the ways to do it is use some software design principles or just programming principles, which I will explain now. I will tell you some principles like KISS, DRY, YADNI, and SOLID. Let's begin with the first one, KISS principle. KISS principle uh, states that most programs um, work best if they are kept simple rather than making it complex. 
So if your program is simple, so other developers will not face any um, problems understanding your code logic, um, and you will not waste a lot of time to find something in your code because it's easy to find it. As you can see in the picture, if there is a simple way to find the solution or solve some problem, just do it. Do not create some something like <laughs> incredible, just do a simple way. And KISS principle means keep it short and simple or keep it simple and straightforward. And in the wise words of Antoine de saint exupery I like these words, perfection is achieved not when, when when there is nothing more to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. Next principle is DRY, about duplication or repetition of data. DRY principle states that your code should not have some duplication parts of repetition parts, because it's not only make your code lengthy, but also it wastes a lot of time when it comes to maintain, debug, or adding new features with the time. And just avoid this mistake, don't duplicate your code, Mm, this principle ensures that uh, some parts of your code will be implemented just in one place, not duplicating in several places. The next principle, YAGNI, you aren't going to need it. Uh, you always make some code and it becomes larger and complex in if you create some feature for the future, but not for present. And if you overdo it, like uh, make a lot of features for the future, but not for the moment. So your code become, will become very um, completely um, difficult to understand. And usually you're not going to use this thing in the future. So you aren't going to need it. Young new principle state, don't implement something until it's necessary. Because in most of the cases, you're not going to use this piece of code. The next principle is solid. Solid is a basic standard of programming. This word is an acronym of five different principles, which I will now explain. The first one is single responsibility principle. Let's take an example of software development team. We have a team who is developing some software. Uh, they have a task to develop some product, and usually the task divided into several parts, and each team member has his job. For example, designer do some design, how the site will look like, uh, developers making code, and testers do some test with code. So we can say that here, like, mm, the task is divided into different small parts, and single, every team member has a single job or single responsibility. Returning back to code, this principle states that every class should have a single responsibility, so just uh, every class should have a single reason to be and to change. Uh, this principle helps us to not to overload class and if uh, we create some another logic, extra logic, so we should use some layers and create big classes into smaller ones divided and uh, use some models. The next solid principle is open-closed. Open Close Principle states that some software entities like um, classes, models, or functions should be open for extension, but closed for modification. It actually means that um, some class should be open for extension, so you can uh, create some subclasses of this class, but it should be closed for modification. So it helps to uh, divide some existing code from modifying one. Next is risk of substitution principle. This principle uh, states that every child class must be substitutable for their parent class. Here we can see the picture, like we have a car class, which is a super class of some other car classes like buggy, cabriolet, or, and others. And we may say that if we want to replace the super class car with some of his child classes, it will be, um, it will be, um, normal to, to do it because his child classes his, uh, has have uh, the same behavior like a parent class and the same base, lo base logic. But it's completely impossible to create, for example, helicopter class as a child class of super class car because he will has completely different basic logic and uh, behavior. And the last solid principles, the next solid principles, not last, is interface segregation. 
Interface segregation is the first principle which is applied to interfaces instead of classes. Uh, and it's very similar to single responsibility principle. This principle just states that you should prefer many client interfaces instead of one general, and each of them should have a single uh, or specific responsibility. Let's take an example. Suppose you enter a restaurant and you are a pure vegetarian. The waiter of this restaurant gave you a menu card which includes vegetarian items, some non-vegetarian items, sweets, and drink. Here, as a customer, you should have some specific uh, menu with only vegetarian items, but not with everything which you don't eat. So, um, uh, so uh, this restaurant should have like special menu cards for several customers, for different types of customers. The same with uh, code. We should prefer like not a general interface, but several specific interfaces. And the last solid principle is dependency inversion principle. This principle states that high-level models or classes should not depend on low-level model, low model or classes. Both should depend upon abstractions. Abstractions should depend upon details, and uh, details should, depend upon, uh, should not depend upon abstractions. Uh, so it simply states that if in your code some class, which is high-level class, is depend more on low model or, or, or low class, low level class, so your code will have a tight coupling, and if you will try to make a change in one class, you can break some another class. So don't do it. And last but not least is refactor principle. Refactor principle just simply states that code rarely comes out right the first time. You always need to, to modify it, add a new feature with the time, and while you do this, you always need to look through your code and rewrite some parts or even redesign it. Refactor principle is a healthy process among all principles of programming list. And in conclusion, I want to quote a few interesting phrases. I like this. Uh, first one is Robert Martin words, truth can only be found in one place, the code. Another one, Martin Fowler, any fool can write code that the computer can understand. Good programmers write code that human can understand. And my favorite one, Kent Beck, I'm not a great programmer. I'm just a good programmer with great habits. So I wish you to become a good programmer with great habits. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, you're welcome. Uh, thank you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, what do you like sure. more, refactor code or writing new code? <laughs> <laughs> um, writing new code. But I sometimes make refactor, but after my refactor, something may, will, will be wrong. <laughs> For example, in last task, I refactor some function, and in cross-check, someone wrote me, this is not work. I checked, and I see that after my refactoring, something was broken. <laughs> so I need to practice in refactoring more. Uh, okay, thank you. How do you think uh, long names for variables or functions, it is okay or not, and why? Um, I think uh, good names is like, um, perfect name is when you read this name and you understand what it means. So if you need to write, for example, like five words to describe some name, it's okay, but not like 20 words because it's over. But for example, 50 or 60 digits, I think it's, it's okay. You just need to uh, understand what the name means, so it will be easy to, to read this code and refactor it. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, so, thank you for your presentation. It was cool and um, so many information. I like it. Uh, we should wait for our next uh, speaker. Uh, let me see. It's uh, Nadia. Are you here? Uh, can you unmute yourself, please? I know you're here. You should be here. <laughs> Okay, let's wait a little. I'll write here. Uh, so.
So, um, do you see me? Yes, I can see you. Excellent. Are you are you are you Nadia? Yes, I am Nadia. Okay. Thank can I start? You. Yes, I can hear you. you. I see your screen, and you can start. Excellent. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, hello, hello. Uh, do you use webcam? Yes, she used. Yeah, you can I see her. Yeah, okay. at the top. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I continue. <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Nadia, and I have worked as a SEO specialist for about three years. And now I will tell you about five most common SEO technical rules that can be useful for web developers. Let's start. SEO is search engine optimization, the process of making your site better for search engines. The most important thing in getting a good rank in Google or other search engine is to make your site attractive, useful, and original. Your role as a web, as a web developer is to ensure that your site is accessible, smooth for users, and while being exposed for Google. I will tell you about Google because now in 2020, it's one of the most important and popular search engine in the world. This guide won't provide any secrets that will automatically rank your site first in Google, but following the best practices outlined below will hopefully make it easier for search engines to understand, grow, and index your content. Let's start. The first SEO rule is to keep your, uh, your staging or development site out of the index. Index means the process of downloading a site or a page's content to the server of search engines, thereby adding it to its index. Uh, there are many actions to uh, there are many actions to you can take to keep uh, visitors and search engines off their servers and other sensitive areas of their website. Here are the options. The first one is HTTP authentication. Um, anything you want to keep out of the index, you should include in site server authentication. Requiring uh, authentication is the preferred method of keeping out users and search engines. Another way is IP whitelisting. Allowing only known IP addresses, such as those belonging to your network or clients and so on, is the next great step of securing your website. Another way is not good, but it's possible to use its directives like no index and disallow in your bit.txt. With these directives, you are telling to search engines not to grow um, your pages, but that doesn't keep them uh, from indexing the page. Uh, there were not all uh, ways to secure your website, but it were, it's where the most popular. And uh, our, my own recommendation is to use HTTP authentication because it's very easy to do and uh, save. Uh, the next rule is to analyze the load speed of your website. Speed is very important for you, for your website. It's so important that Google has made it an actual ranking factor. Google has taken to improve the loading speed by providing a set of tools for web developers and webmasters. Uh, the first one series is Google Lighthouse. You can search in Google Chrome DevTools and there are five most important parts of this uh, service. It's progressive web app, performance, accessibility, best practices, and new one is SEO. Another service is page speed inside. Uh, it's powered by previous service uh, uh, Lighthouse, and uh, but it has an easy format on a web page. And uh, you can search some recommendations for from these services like to compress and modify your code and in what files you should do it, reduce page redirects, remove render block in JavaScript, use tree shaking, leverage browser caching, use a CDN, leverage pre-connect, prefetch, and preload, analyze quick critical rendering paths in Chrome DevTools, 
to keep JavaScript bundles, especially for mobile devices. Small bundles uh, improve site speed and lower memory usage. Use server-side or pre-rendering to improve site speed and user experience. Use Chrome DevTools performance tab to test uh, your to test. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, to test your site in different devices and compress your images and experiment with quality settings and explore lazy loading. The next rule is to check if your site is mobile friendly. The number of mobile searches is uh, exploding. In fact, 53% of all searches in Google are now done from mobile devices. Needless to say that mobile is the future of search. And that's probably why Google uh, is overhauling their algorithm to focus on mobile search. Uh, there are three main recommendations uh, to implement a mobile uh, website. The first one, responsive web design, just for screen size. Dynamic serving serves different content based on a user device. Separate URLs, different URLs that serve mobile optimized content, but it's not advised. Also, you can check if your site is mobile friendly in mobile friendly tests from Google, and you can uh, find out uh, files or document documents in what you have uh, some mistakes or problems. And also the best practices are that your mobile version should display the same content as your desktop site, Page title, text, and meta description should uh, remain the same. And you should use the meta name viewport in the head of your page to uh, tell the browser how to adjust your content. The next one is handle errors and error page on website. A four and four page or uh, error page is the content that users see when they try to reach a non-existent content of your site and it's the page that your server displays when they try to when uh, it can't find the url requested by you by a uh, user it is really important for a resource that doesn't exist to return a foreign for code because if it returns a 200 code Google my index it and it will be duplicate content content that it that uh, will not good. Mm, my recommendations for this page is uh, are uh, to customize your four and four page and save main navigation, add links to the most popular pages, for example in blog or in uh, bestsellers, and be creative with your four and fours web design. If it puts uh, a smile on users' faces, it might be even better than if they landed on the right page. Also, my recommendation is monitoring, regular monitoring. Go and look through your cross logs and requested logs. And if you have a lot of four and four pages, uh, uh, pages that have four and four code, you should fix it. And the last several is use human readable URL structure. URL or web address uh, consists of protocol, domain name, pass, and has the following structure. Why it's important for SEO? A well-crafted URL provides both humans and search engines an easy to understand indication of what the destination page will be about. Also, URLs are a minor ranking factor that search engines use when determining a particular page or resources relevance to a, secure, to a search query. Uh, main recommendations for web addresses are to choose human-readable URLs with descriptive, descriptive keywords. Um, look at these examples. You can see the first variant, imdb.com, it's unclear destination. And uh, the best variant is the second, healthline.com. 
because it has uh, easy to read, easy to understand URL, and uh, everybody understand what content will be about. The next one is use short addresses. After 550 uh, pixels in Google, uh, I'm sorry, Google will cut this part, part of URL and uh, in their search. A good rule is uh, try, to, try to keep your URLs as short as you can. The next one is exclude dynamic parameters when possible. Uh, all the URLs can include ID numbers and uh, code. The best practice is to use uh, words which people can comprehend. Avoid the use of URL parameters if possible because uh, they can create issues with, uh, with duplicate and tracking content. The next one is separate path and page keywords with hyphens. Try to avoid using uh, try to avoid using underscores and spaces or other characters in your to separate your URL words in URL. And the last one is use lowercase letters. Uh, in some cases, uppercase letters can create issues with also duplicate and tracking your pages. Uh, I have told you, uh, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, also, I wrote some recommendations, but I won't stop on it. I would like to save your time, but you can find it soon if you will interest in it. Uh, I have told you only main information for developers according to technical SEO. And, uh, but another relevant information you should hear from your webmasters. We haven't got common rules uh, and all sites are individual. You can find more information in Google tutorials for, uh, for webmasters. Thanks a lot, have a nice day. And uh, have you got any questions for me? What's your best SEO result? Uh, I work. I have worked only with Belarusian business, and uh, my my best result was uh, maybe traffic to site with uh, with which company. <laughs> I can't. I can't uh, see your company because I have uh, secure information. It was site about. Any uh, of seminar? Seeds. Seeds. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Uh, hello. It was oh. a very nice presentation. Thank you. I wanted to ask you um, why you decided to change. Uh, uh, like a job, or what didn't you, you like while you were working as SEO? Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, thank you the question. Uh, I um, I have worked only with Belarusian business and uh, they haven't got enough money and time to spend on your site. And uh, I understand that another, maybe foreign companies, uh, and foreign search engines is another than our Belarusian or Russian uh, variant, and I don't want uh, to do it. <laughs> and mm. uh, I understand that I like to to develop sites, and uh, my first my first uh, uh, my first education with this was with bootstrap <laughs> i like it very much and i continue to to learn more information about it okay thank you very much thank you uh, thank you very much for your presentation i really liked it a lot i have uh, one question um how do you think uh, which uh, server errors have to be handled so you, in your uh, presentation you talk about 404 maybe something else i'm sorry can you repeat please i i don't understand all information 
Yeah, okay. So in your presentation, you told that several um, server errors have to be handled. For example, when it's server error 404, it have to, we have to make a special page, yes? Yes. Uh, maybe any else um, server errors have to be the, also some pages? How do you think? Uh, I don't understand okay. at I all. Mean, for example, um, when the server um, um, give error um, 500, have we uh, make a special page for this error? Uh, yes, I understand. Okay. Uh, I think no, because it's errors with server. And uh, it's problems with server and you shouldn't do any page for it. So you think that the best um, make only for zero 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 four yeah no, yes no. yes i think so okay thank you very much thank you uh thank you for your presentation uh, we should uh, stop now uh now it's coffee break or lunch time whatever you like better okay hello my name is maxim and today i want to talk with you about scrum if you somehow connected with programming you probably heard this word Let's start with the definition of the word Scrum. There are a lot of books and articles which can tell us about it. Often in such media, people call Scrum as an approach, method or methodology. Even in one book, which you can see on the slide, I found that the author writes, Scrum, a revolutionary approach to project management. Okay, what we can understand from this sentence? At first, Scrum is an approach. Secondly, it is a revolutionary approach. Thirdly, Scrum is about project management. And finally, it is all a lie. Yeah, you didn't overhear, it is a lie. Scrum is not an approach, it isn't revolutionary, and it isn't about project management. The first question you probably have, if Scrum is not an approach, method, or even methodology. So, what is it? Scrum is a framework. It is a bit confusing because developers usually associate the word framework with Angular or Vue, but Scrum also fits to this group. Uh, okay, we understand the meaning of the word Scrum but, uh, and who tells truth and who lies, but uh, why do we need to use it? It should be mentioned that Scrum is used by 90% of the companies. Uh, and also we have a Scrum guide, which is the most truthful source of information about Scrum because it was written by its creators, by Ken Schwabe and Jeff Thutterland. In this guide, it is said that Scrum is a framework for developing, delivering and sustaining complex products. Uh, to fully understand the meaning of the word Scrum, let's discuss the definition of the word framework. Framework is a set of basic rules and elements on which the development process is built. It means that Scrum as a framework provides the foundation on which developers build programs. Uh, okay, we understand the meaning of the Scrum, but why do we really need to use it? It should be mentioned that Scrum is used by 90% of the companies. Why is it so popular? Maybe because it was founded on empiricism. Empiricism asserts that all knowledge comes from uh, experience and making decisions. There are three crucial parts of Scrum and any empirical process. There are transparency, inspection, and adaptation. Transparency requires that all main characteristics of the project should be visible for the Scrum team. The next aspect is inspection. This word speaks for itself because uh, Scrum team needs to inspect uh, what goes well and what goes wrong. The last aspect is adaptation. And this aspect appears after the inspection because first of all, Scrum team needs to inspect and if something goes wrong, it should adapt and uh, make changes. Let's summarize this part. We have three crucial elements of Scrum. There are transparency, inspection, and adaptation. 
Okay, but who are the heroes? Who are this super team who adheres to these three principles? Let's introduce them. The first personage of this amazing framework is the product owner. Uh, you may think that he is a person who owns a product, but it isn't really so because uh, the product owner is responsible for managing the product backlog. No one else in Scrum team can manage the product backlog from their own. The next personage of this framework is represented by people who want to become, from my point of view, 99% of Rolling Scopes students. There is the development team, programmers who design a project. The optimal size of the development team varies from three to nine people. It has been proven that with this number of members, the maximum efficiency is achieved. Uh, the last personage is uh, a person who knows Scrum as the back of his hand. He is a guru of Scrum. He is a Scrum master. His main role is to promote and support Scrum as defined in the Scrum guide. Let's uh, calculate the parts of Scrum team together. Okay, we have the product owner, the development team, and the Scrum master. There are three parts, not big enough, isn't it? But this little number of members allows Scrum team to communicate more and discuss crucial problems in more detail. Uh, by the Scrum guide, uh, there are four main events which were created for such purposes. Uh, these all events held during the sprint. Sprint is one more crucial term in Scrum. Uh, it held usually from one to four weeks, and uh, during this period of time, Scrum team creates the most usable and releasable product increment, or just a product. Uh, okay, we understand the meaning of the word sprint, but what do we need to do before starting it? What we usually do before starting any important task? Usually, we promise ourselves that we will do it tomorrow, but as a perfect variant, we should plan our work. There is sprint planning. During this event, Scrum team crafts a sprint goal and also selects tasks from the product backlog. The next event is daily Scrum. It's an everyday event which takes no more than 15 minutes. During this event, uh, each member of the development team tells everyone what he did yesterday and what he is going to do today. Yeah. Uh, thus, daily scrum is just a plan for the upcoming day. At the end of the sprint, scrum team has the sprint review. Uh, it uh, relies on uh, concepts of inspection and adaptation because it was created for inspection and adaptation of the product backlog and product increment. And the last event is Sprint Retrospective, which was created for identifying improvements, so which Scrum team will apply in the next sprint. Okay, let's summarize this part. At first, we need to plan our work. There is Sprint Planning. Then we have a Daily Scrum, daily event which takes no more than 15 minutes. At the end of the sprint, Scrum team has sprint review for inspection and adaptation of the product backlog. And also the last event is sprint retrospective, which was created for identifying improvements. And this loop repeats every sprint. Okay, now it is time to make some conclusions. Scrum is the most applicable and the most effective framework in the programming sphere. It proved its efficiency and therefore it is so popular. Not information was covered, but if you want to learn more about Scrum, I highly recommend you to find the link on the Scrum guide in the net and read it. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh. Hello, Maxime. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me how do you think how big have to be the team to use Scrum? Uh, I have already told you about it. The optimal size of the ah, 
of the whole Scrum team, yeah? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, from my point of view, if we take uh, five people from uh, the development team, uh, one uh, one Scrum master and one the product owner, it's the optimal size is just seven people, maybe. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> hi. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, how do you think? What happens if the team was not able to complete all the tasks to the deadline? What happens then? Uh, we can hear you. You are not audible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, from my yeah, from my perspective, uh, uh, it is. Uh, the purpose of the product owner and scrum master because they should uh, adapt uh, this problem and uh, make decisions uh, and make changes in the product backlog maybe uh, i mean uh, options the the options are uh tasks are transferred to the subsequent to one of the subsequent sprints or the duration of the sprint is increased. So what option is correct? How do you think? Uh, from my point of view, the second option is uh, the appropriate for this problem. To increase the duration of the sprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, but actually it's not the case here uh tasks are usually transferred oh. to the next sprint uh, but uh, it's not about mm -hmm. it's not about correct or in, incorrect answers uh all we need to know how yeah. you comprehend and answer our questions thank you thank you thank you so much uh Mm -hmm. Let's. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. I like your presentation. Yeah. It was cool. Thank you so much. And uh, now it's Kate. Are you here for performing? Okay, we need it. We need to wait for Ekaterina. Hello. Okay, I can see you. Hello. Hello. Can you share your screen with us? It's, uh, yeah, okay. Mm. Okay. I can start. Yeah, sure. Um, I would like to speak about um, Redux. Redux is an open source JavaScript library for managing application state. The library was created by Daniel Abramov and uh, uh, by Daniel Abramov and Andrew Clark. Uh, according to Abramov, he tried to create an implementation of the Flux idea with a different logic. The main difference between um, Flux and Redux it um, the flux uh, had, has a multiple store and the Redux has a single store. Redux can be described in uh, three fundamental principles. Um, it is single source of truth. It means um, there is uh, only uh, one place which represents state of application. Second is it is state is read only. The only way to change the state is uh, emit to action an object uh, describing what happened. And uh, change are made with pure function. Uh, its return value is the same for the same arguments. Main selling points. 
Redux help us write application uh, run in different environments and are easy to test. Redux is uh, compatible with many other frameworks like uh, React, Angular, and even pure JavaScript. The entire state of an application is stored in one uh, central location. Uh, the Redux the tools make it easy to trace your application state changes. Redux works with any UI layer and has a large ecosystem of add-ons to fit your needs. Uh, you can see um, Redux data flow. The data life cycle in uh, Redux uh, follows these four steps. Um, you can uh, store a dispatch with action and um, an action is a plain object describing what happened. Uh, second, the Redux store call, uh, calls the reducer, reducer fun function. Uh, uh, the reducer, the store uh, will pass uh, two arguments to reducer, uh, the current state, the current state, and the action. Uh, three, it's uh, the root reducer may, may combine the output of multiple reducers into a single state um, with combined reducers. The Redux store saves the complete state tree returned, that returned by a root reducer. Mm. What is the state? The state is the data that de defines the condition of a system. Uh, for example, it's to do list, user identification information, Facebook post, and another. I use a uh, Redux in my task fancy weather um, and uh, in the state I have um, language uh, information about temperature uh, about city and uh, other uh, action the only way to change the state is uh, a need to an action, an uh, object describing, describing what happened. Um, the second, it's example of um, action of action creator function. Um, it's an uh, example of reducing. A reducer are a pure, pure, pure function that take the previous state, add an action, and return the next state. The reducer function must always return a new copy of state and never modify state directly. Um, on the next step, we created our we create our store. Uh, the store contains our state uh, and all the logic to update it are passed to do it. Um, the create our store, we use a create store function um, from Redux. It takes the reducer state and um, apply uh, middleware. Uh, with um, sunk and logger. Um, you can use uh, only sunk and uh, another arguments in this function. Um, we uh, dispatch a uh, method. It's example of uh, Redux. Uh, how um, what do Redux in uh, 
in uh, okay um uh, we call it store dispatch and pressing um the value returned from an action creator sends an action back to store um, subscribe method um adds a change listener it will be called any time an action is dispatched uh, we uh, uh, be, we we call a state uh, with method get state uh, to this uh, example of function create store in Redux. It uh, return an object with many methods. It look uh, like a pattern observer. We have component and uh, that response uh, what happened in other components. Um, I described uh, only the basic applying about other plan you can um, read in this uh, links. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, you. Tatiana, for your presentation. Uh, can you tell us why did you choose this topic? Um, because uh, Redux is important to uh, JavaScript development. And uh, it's a useful uh, thing. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? No. I, do, okay. I don't have a question. Uh, I don't have questions, uh, but I uh, want to appreciate your presentation. Thank you for to being for being brave. Uh, thank you for presentation. And uh, our next speaker is uh, Artem. Are you here? Can you speak now? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. One Can you second. share screen and uh, web camera if it's possible no. oh, okay i can see you okay nice uh in translation mm -hmm. uh, yeah. okay do you see my screen yes you can start okay one minute uh sorry is it artyom or vladislav Artem, Artem. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Um, uh, hello, my name is Artem, and today I want to talk about TypeScript, about it is basic types, function, and classes. So I hope I can help you with a little bit. So you can ask me, what is it? TypeScript development began in late 2012. It was born at Microsoft, and it is actual creator is the programmer Anderson Hasenberg. TypeScript is a strongly typed and compiled language. In order to start writing in TypeScript, you do not need to read this entire tutorial. It is enough to install and you can immediately write in the same JavaScript, because TypeScript it does an extension of the exciting standard. The TypeScript compile itself can be installed using the npm package manager command, which is used in Node.js. Look at this, um, and you can ask me for who. TypeScript uh, was built uh, from the Angular and uh, or, or was uh, uh, Angular was built was built on TypeScript from the Microsoft to make JavaScript easier for commercial development. But now TypeScript is used by developers on the Angular and the React frameworks. So now I want to speak about base types. TypeScript as well as uh, JavaScript has uh, same uh, same base types like Boolean. Uh, number, string, and array, but TypeScript has its own base types, uh, like tuple, which uh, which uh, allow you to define the known number of uh, uh, various uh, various values, various values. Uh, 
the next one is uh, Anon, uh, which uh, um, uh, which are more easier way to the setting of random names of the set of values. Uh, the next one is Any, which uses it when we want uh, to disable that type taking. Uh, and the last one is Void. Uh, it's a opposite of Any, and we use Void when we want to turn function function uh, without a value. So now I can speak. Uh, I, now I want to speak about function. Uh, that function is a fundamental blocks of JavaScript language. JavaScript has uh, modulus, classes, namespaces, but function play uh, a key role. Uh, TypeScript adds uh, a new method to JavaScript function and makes them uh, easier. In TypeScript, all parameters are needed. Uh, that means that uh, we need to. Uh, pass it number of parameters like function uh, expect. Uh, look at the example, please. Uh, we see that uh, function build name with two arguments, uh, first name string and last name string. As, uh, as a result, we can notice that we pass it, uh, in the first case, we pass it uh, one parameter and we get an arrow. The next one, we pass it three parameters and we get an arrow two. And the last one, we pass it two parameters and we good, uh, have a good result. So you can ask me how we can make uh, an optional parameters in TypeScript. So we need to put the question mark in the end of parameters uh, like this. Look at the example. We can notice that we have a last name with a question mark in the end. And uh, as a result, we pass it uh, in, the, in, the first, in the result, in, for, in the first case, we pass it one parameter and we, we, good, uh, we have a good result. So TypeScript has a default parameters. Uh, like this. Uh, look at the example, please. Uh, we have uh, the default parameters, and uh, uh, as a result, in first case, we good to uh, have uh, we ha we good uh, we, ha we have a good uh, result because we pass it one parameters. Uh, the last parameters was uh, default parameters. All optional parameters and all default parameters must come after mandatory parameters. So. Uh, now I want to talk about classes uh, and start with the X6 JavaScript. Uh, programmers can use the classes for make the co their code uh, easier, and TypeScript uh, developers can use it too. Uh, look at the simple example. Uh, look, look at the simple example. Well, we can uh, notice that we have class greeter uh, constructor, and uh, it is method greet. Uh, all uh, in class programming. Uh, in uh, class programming, we can make a class. Uh, <laughs> sorry, um, in uh, class programming, we use uh, we we can make classes more perceptible with use inheritance. Uh, look at the example. Uh, we can notice that we have class horse. Uh, well, we look. We have class animal with uh, it is method move and class snake uh, and class horse inherit animals and they can use uh, uh, animals method move uh, too because they uh, inherit animals. Um, how we can notice in the last in the last examples uh, we have uh, freely access members because uh, uh, in TypeScript all uh, classes are public uh, by default. But we can put public mark uh, like this. Uh, we have class animal with public name string. Uh, the other type of access uh, this is a private, uh, which uh, means that we can we can't use the class uh, member outside this uh, like this uh, private name. And uh, look at the example like this. We have the class animal with private name, class uh, right with extend animal, a class employer. Uh, with private name uh, and class employer in difficult like animal, but they are not the same because they have uh, its own private names. Uh, and the second is a protected, we use the same as uh, uh, private, but uh, we can use a class method in subclass, like, oh, oh, sorry, uh, in subclass like this, we have class person and the class employer, which inherit person and uh, employer can use uh, person method. And the last one is read only, we make read only property. Uh, so finally, I want to uh, say that TypeScript is a really interesting language uh, and uh, have a, a more 
perfectable method for you to make your code easier. So you can ask me why should I try TypeScript? And I have a three reasons. That the first, the ability to describe each element of the application forces developers to make program logic. The next one is the ability to describe the scope of class properties. And the last one uh, is that developers need to write a few tests. All the parameters of the method are described and it's, uh, the code is compiled. Each is called is valid. So, however, you need to try it yourself. Thank you for the listening. Uh, thank you for a great presentation. Um, can you summarize what is the main purpose of TypeScript? Uh, can you repeat, please? Can you uh, summarize what is the main purpose of the TypeScript? Uh, that uh, the code are compiled and you don't need to make a test uh, and uh, how said my uh, mentor that the TypeScript is a JavaScript with steroids. Mm -hmm. So you think that uh, if you use TypeScript you don't need to make any tests? No, you will need uh, to write a few tests because all the parameters are all the methods are described. Uh, you need mm -hmm. to, do, to do tests, but uh, you need to write few tests. Less than with JavaScript, you think? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, thank you for your presentation. Uh, can you please answer my question? Does TypeScript support all the principles of object-oriented programming? How do you think? Oh, can you repeat because I have a bad network? <laughs> Does TypeScript support all the principles of object-oriented programming? Uh, ah, uh, I understand what you mean. Uh, uh, so, and uh, uh, an and another question in parallel to this: uh, Does JavaScript support all the principles of uh, object-oriented programming? No, no. Uh, uh, JavaScript is not uh, supported as a object-oriented parameters because uh, uh, we don't have uh, interfaces uh, in JavaScript. But I can. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there is no, there are no correct or incorrect answers. All I want to know is how you understand the questions and how you answer. That's it. Uh -huh. I understand that uh, you uh, you want to say that uh, JavaScript has uh, JavaScript and TypeScript has object oriented methods. Uh, so no, because they are. Um, so it's really difficult to me to. Uh, one second. Mm. That, that's uh, okay. That's okay. Uh, one second. Just, uh, uh, okay. 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 That's that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I have another question. If you have a time. Uh, well, um, how often and and in in which cases we can use the type any of variables in uh, type two. Sorry, because can you repeat, please? <laughs> Don't uh, yes, listen. How often and in which cases we can use type any of variables in TypeScript? Ah, uh, uh, so I can't uh, advise it your question because uh, I don't use TypeScript in my order. I got learning for myself, but now I'm writing uh, as a React. Uh, and uh, I think that it's more... Oh, well, uh, well, I understand. Okay. Uh, if it's good practice, how do you think? Uh, please repeat, I don't listen. <laughs> if it's a uh, good practice to use uh, any type of variable, anyway, no, in that case, like uh, an idea. Um, I think uh, really it's a good type uh, to make all uh, this. If I... Okay. I, uh, I guess it's Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, is all? Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. It was interesting. Do you? Uh, I can, I can see you, yeah. Oh, great. Yes. So, let's start. What is, uh, where is your screen?
Mm-hmm. Okay, I can see. Do you it. see my okay. presentation? Let's let's start. Yes. Great. So uh, let's start. As you can see, uh, the topic of my presentation is a regular expression or simply regex. Uh, before we dive into material, I would like to quote one of the uh, Mozilla developers and contributors. So. Uh, some people, when confronted with a problem, think, uh, okay, I know I will use regular expression. Now they have two problems. Uh, why is it so? Let's try to figure it out. What is uh, regular expression? Um, uh, here are one of the possible uh, definitions. A regular expression is a sequence of characters that is used for uh, one or more match in a search pattern. Sounds complicated, isn't it? Uh, let's uh, try to explain it, uh, explain it uh, in a simple way. Okay, uh, what you can do with a regular expression? The simple answer, answer is search for match and uh, replace single letters or numbers in strings, uh, fragments of strings, or entire text. Now let's take a closer look. Uh, like any developer tool, a regular expression have light and uh, dark sides. Uh, if you uh, choose the path of light, you can validate user input uh, in form fields before submit. Remember that annoying, your password must contain uh, at least eight uh, character, one uppercase, one uh, lowercase, and so on. Uh, you can easily done it uh, with a regular expression. Also, you can search for email in your database uh, that starts with a specific letter, and um, or all clients uh, with phone numbers that match the USA phone codes, uh, or maybe your friends in phone book which name starts with something like an Anton, Andre, and uh, but not an Alexander, he's a nasty guy. Uh, you can also replace one string for another. For, for example, you can easily replace uh, all uh, dirty curses from your uh, forum desk into unicorn names or vice versa. I uh, want to hear about uh, um, about uh, what things wait for you in a path of darkness. Okay, so you can uh, parse for spam. Have a large database with uh, stolen people's data? Great, let's pick their emails and phones and send a ton of spam with link to phishing sites. Parse for content. Imagine uh, that you would like to create a website with an interesting articles to earn a couple of bucks on uh, Google AdSense. But there is a problem. Uh, you don't want to pay the copywriter and uh, no one uh, reads your own articles. Okay, Google, uh, let's parse the search results uh, of the top 10 sites, add small rewrite, push it to web and uh, profit. And you can also parse for poll. Yes, it is. So uh, now you learn about good and uh, bad things uh, that you could do with a regular expression. Uh, which, pal- which path you prefer, maybe both of it, why not? Uh, before we start learning the syntax of uh, regular expression, remember that it can look intimidating at first, but, but uh, when you master it, uh, you can save thousands of hours when you need to parse large amount of uh, data. Let's go. Uh, there are only a few functions in uh, JavaScript for working with uh, regular expression. Uh, we'll start with the test function. Let's imagine that uh, we need to find out if the text contains one certain word. For example, is there a London word in uh, the following phrase? London is a capital of Great Britain. How can we test it easy? Uh, as you can see, we assign a string uh, London is a capital of Great Britain to a str constant. And next, we push a regular expression with a London word to a constant named regex. Please note that uh, we place uh, regex between slashes. No need quotes or something. Uh, it's really easy to remember. You just add two slash like for comment and uh, then put regex inside. Uh, next, we apply test function to regex and pass the whole string as uh, its uh, argument. Since the phrase uh, contains uh, London world, uh, function with will uh, return to. Is it uh, pretty easy? Yes, of course. Um, uh, by the way, our function returns true and for the following phrase, for the following strings, we're going to London. Uh, yes, London, you know, fish, chips, cup of tea, bad pores, uh, bad, bad food, worse weather, and so on. But not for the last one. Keep calm and uh, go to London, where London work is the uh, uppercase. Uh, why is it so? Because there is uh, only a letter capitalized in our regex. Uh, if we need to, uh, that regex was a case insensitive, uh, we need to add uh, I flag uh, after the last slash, like this, slash London, slash I. Let me introduce you the flags, one of the instruments that makes regular expressions so powerful. 
the most popular flags are I flag, uh, it makes the patching case insensitive, and uh, G flag. Uh, search for uh, all matches, not the first one. Yes, I said uh, matches. We can not only test rings for regex, uh, but search for matches and uh, save it to arrays. The JS function called match will help us to do this. So uh, let's consider the following quote from the social network movie. A million dollar isn't cool. You know what's cool? A billion dollar. Um, let's declare a new regex as uh, dollars and uh, log the result of match function. The result will be uh, an array with one element, dollars. Um, by the way, please pay attention that uh, we call match function on string, not on the regex. Uh, you might, might ask me who would ever need to get an array of words from a single word. But uh, what if I say that there is no need to pass uh, the whole word to the regex? You can use only part of word or something like a template or patching. There are meta characters and shortened uh, character set uh, that will help you. Uh, let's start uh, with the meta characters and the first will be the dot or period. It matches the, any uh, single character except a line break. So if you declare string variable as a kill bill and uh, regex as uh, dot ill uh, and call match function, it, uh, it returns the array from two elements, kill and bill. The following three wildcards apply to the previous symbol or group and uh, work in a similar way. Plus uh, will match if previous symbol meets one or more times. Asterisk if zero or more times. Question mark if zero or one time. Uh, the next two characters, the next two character class are more interesting. The brackets uh, will match if string contains one of the symbols inside it. So if we discover the regex that contains uh, or from a i u o um, inside brackets, it will match for the following strings: dick, back, buck, and bock. Uh, also, is it possible to pass a range of symbol to brackets? For example, i hyphen z will match for any letter. Any letter. Uh, the next class is parentheses. It uh, matches if uh, symbols in string arrange in the same order. Alteration symbol uh, matches if uh, match part to the left or part to the right of it. As you can see, if we place alteration symbol uh, between uh, love and hate works, uh, we, get, we will get match either I love regex or I hate regex phrases. What if we need to specify that word or symbol uh, must be located uh, in the beginning or in the end of string? To resolve this issue, we can use the circumflex sign for beginning of the string and dollar sign for its end. Uh, let's declare the here come Johnny string and the regex for Johnny with exclamation mark. Of course, uh, it will match, but uh, what if we need to make sure string contains only of journey world? We can simply add circumflex uh, before the first letter uh, of the journey regex and dollar sign after it. In that case, match will fail. But if we need to match that uh, journey world located at, uh, at the very end of string, uh, we can remove circumflex and uh, leave only dollar sign. In uh, this case, match will succeed. Quantifiers. Uh, if we need to make sure that letter or group repeated in the string from n to m times, we can specify that inside braces. So uh, if we specify that a letter must be repeated from three to five times, we get true for the first two strings and false for the last because there are seven a letters inside it. Uh, also, is it possible to specify concrete amount uh, of repeated symbol instead of range uh, or only minimum or maximum repeats? After we met all the popular card classes, uh, let me introduce you so-called shorthand character set uh, for the commonly used patterns. Uh, backslash W for any alphanumeric character. Backslash big W for any non-numeric character. Backslash D for any digit. Backslash big D for any non-digit. Backslash S for any white space character. Backslash big S for any non-white space character. When you use a regex, it is absolutely necessary to combine wildcards, shorthand character sets, and quantifiers. Let's describe uh, the following pattern. The circumflex indicates the beginning of the string. The dollar sign is ending. Charts inside brackets, group of possible symbols. Well, as uh, 3 and 50 inside braces say the string will match only if it will consist of 3 to 15 charts. Uh, that's why Johnny, Johnny underscore 666, and John Hiffen Whip will match and Johnny with big G, John with exclamation mark, and uh, Johnny from the shining will not. The last JS function for working with uh, regex that we will learn about is replace. 
as its name implies, it will replace one substring to another. Uh, let's declare, for example, the matrix reloaded type, uh, as title, revolutions as a new part of title, and reload it as a regex. Uh, if we call replace function on the title and pass the regex and new part as parents, uh, the function will find pattern reloaded, replace it with revolution, and log the new matrix revolution string. The last but uh, not the least feature is uh, look aheads. Look aheads are patterns that tell uh, JavaScript to look ahead uh, in your string to check for patterns uh, further along. This can be useful when you want to search for multiple patterns over the same string. There are two, uh, there are two kind of uh, look aheads, the positive and negative. The uh, positive look aheads uh, make sure a pattern is here, while a negative look aheads uh, will make sure the pattern is not there. Lookaheads are often used for password validators. For example, the following pattern will match only if password con uh, contains one big letter, one small letter, one digit, and uh, at least eight chars long. A couple of uh, simple examples here. The regular expression for the email and for the phone. It contains almost all the features that we have just reviewed. There are some major advantages of regular expression. They speed up the development time, reduce the amount of program code, universal for almost every programming uh, language, and as a bonus, makes your parse ninja and make people who don't know regex think you are a genius. Of course, uh, there are some drawbacks. Uh, regex is hard to master, difficult to debug, it looks like an alien language, and if you don't come into your code, you won't be able to remember what they mean after a week. Finally, I would like to quote one of the articles at Medium.com where author says that regex is like, is like the end slice of bread everyone skips when learn programming. Don't do that, uh, master regular expression and maybe the force be with you. Here are some references. Uh, the first one is uh, for MDN documentation on regular expressions uh, where you can find all that you need to know about it. And the second, uh, some kind of sandbox where you can practice and uh, debug regex. Enjoy. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very interesting presentation, really. And you mentioned that uh, there are some difficulties uh, uh, while you're using uh, regular expressions. And um, can you say that when you really need them and when you don't need to use them because it will bring more problems? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, now I'm working as a PHP developer in a, a marketing, en marketing agency and uh, we develop a site with uh, more than uh, 1 million registrations. So uh, we use regular expression in uh, all forms, uh, reg register forms, login forms, uh, recover forms and edit forms. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe I will not use uh, regular expressions in uh, more complex uh, patterns where I can easily uh, use uh, code, code features, not the regex. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hello. hello, thank you for your presentation. Uh, can we use special characters in our regex? And if we can, uh, what should we do with them? Yes, of course. Uh, we. Uh, we can use uh, special chars, uh, but if we uh, decide to use special chars, we, can, we must uh, shield it uh, with a backslash. Escape, escape. Uh, escape, sorry, escape, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, uh, Dmitry, thank you so much. Your presentation mm -hmm. was awesome. I uh, like it so much and I even save it for for me for uh, future, um, I don't know, education. Uh, thank well. you. Uh, next uh, is Tatiana. Uh, hi, my name is Tani and I want to tell you about TypeScript. Uh, TypeScript is an open source uh, programming language uh, developed uh, by Microsoft that compiles to plain JavaScript. Uh, in fact, um, Mm, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. Uh, also, mm, TypeScript and JavaScript are two uh, separate languages. Mm, uh, mm, any uh, valid uh, uh, JavaScript code is also valid TypeScript code. Um, mm, TypeScript um, brings to JavaScript a type system. Um, uh, so, um, uh, 
TypeScript uh, has uh, the following uh, advantages. Um, once declared, uh, a variable uh, can't um, change its type um, and can uh, only um, um, accept uh, 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 certain values. Mm. Uh, it makes uh, uh, code more readable, more predictable, and more self-documenting. Um, TypeScript uh, compiler alerts um, developers to type uh, related mistakes, so they have no opportunity to hit uh, the production phase. Mm -hmm. TypeScript is supported by many integrated developed, uh, development uh, environments such as uh, WebStorm, uh, Visual Studio Code, and uh, Eclipse. Um, TypeScript uh, uh, uses uh, um, a class-based uh, object-oriented uh, programming uh, concept. Uh, such as uh, classes, uh, inheritance, uh, interfaces. Mm. But uh, TypeScript also has uh, disadvantages. Uh, the first one is uh, that um, TypeScript is not a true static typing language. Um, this option uh, is, uh, this feature is optional and uh, eventually uh, TypeScript code um, is transpiled to untyped uh, JavaScript code. Uh, so uh, there is always uh, a possibility of uh, weird uh, uh, variable uh, conversions uh, during runtime. Mm. Uh, TypeScript code is uh, also uh, larger than uh, the same one uh, JavaScript code. Uh, and uh, browsers um, can't um, um, interpret uh, uh, TypeScript, uh, so um, it must be uh, transpiled to, to JavaScript and uh, it uh, uh, demands uh, uh, additional time. Mm. Uh, TypeScript can be installed uh, via NPM and uh, um, by installing uh, Visual Studio plugins. Mm. Uh, uh, to write your program on TypeScript, you just need to create um, a file with the extension .ts, mm, write your code, and uh, uh, then um, run in the command line TypeScript compiler. Mm. TypeScript compiler, compiler uh, generates uh, a JavaScript version um, uh, of TypeScript uh, code. Mm. Mm. Uh, 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 um. uh, there are following types uh, in uh, TypeScript, any built in types, uh, user defined types. Uh, any uh, is a super type of all data types, uh, it denotes uh, dynamic type. Mm. Built in types uh, includes uh, uh, string, uh, numbers, uh, boolean, many of them are reminds uh, remind, uh, types in JavaScript. Uh, the void um, type uh, uh, denotes, uh, uh, denotes uh, uh, when uh, data um, uh, when data uh, aren't uh, uh, exists. Uh, for example, in function that uh, returns uh, nothing. Um, never type indicates the value that uh, will never occur. For example, um, uh, in function uh, that uh, throw, uh, throws an exception. Um, um, uh, types uh, uh, allows, uh, allow to uh, declare a set of named constants um, uh, and uh, it can be used as function parameters or return type. And there are two ways uh, to declare an array in TypeScript uh, using square brackets and uh, using um, a generic array type. Uh, there are new data type uh, tuples. Um, tuples um, allow to use a, a multiply data type um, as uh, shown uh, on the slide. Um, a function 
uh, in TypeScript can be uh, declared as um, a named function or anonymous function. Um, TypeScript uh, also uh, supports uh, arrow function uh, and uh, TypeScript compiler uh, expects um, the same uh, the same number and uh, data types of uh, arguments uh, as um, uh, as defined uh, um, in function signature. Uh, there is also um, uh, optional parameter fun functionality um, in uh, TypeScript. Uh, you just need uh, to uh, to mark with question mark um, optional. Sorry, uh, we don't see your screen. Uh, Try to share it again. Talk shows. Okay, don't worry. Так, сейчас я нажала. Okay, great. Так. Optional parameters uh, must be marked with the question mark. Mm. TypeScript interfaces uh, used to define the type um, um, of uh, a function of an array. Uh, TypeScript uh, interface can extend one or more interfaces and can be implemented uh, with a class. Uh, there is an example of a TypeScript interface. Uh, uh, before uh, ECMAScript 6, um, there were no uh, classes in JavaScript, but they were in um, TypeScript. Um, and um, there is an example of a TypeScript class. Um, uh, that, uh, there is abstract class in TypeScript. Uh, it's, uh, mm, they are, ma they are mm, mainly used for inheritance and we can uh, um, create an instance of abstract class. Uh, abstract uh, classes uh, can include uh, some um, abstract methods and property properties, uh, and uh, all abstract methods must be defined uh, in the driving uh, classes. Mm. There are three um, data modifiers uh, in um, um, TypeScript, public, um, private, and protected. Uh, by default, uh, all uh, properties uh, are public um, and can be accessed, accessed anywhere without uh, restriction. Uh, private uh, access modifiers uh, ensures uh, uh, that um, members uh, of, uh, of, of the class uh, can be um, uh, access only um, only in uh, this class. Um, unprotected uh, uh, access modifier um, are similar to private, uh, only uh, the protected um, properties can be accessed uh, using the deriving classes. Uh, uh, by default, uh, uh, all there is a global scope in uh, TypeScript, and to create a local scope, um, um, and models are used to, to create a, a local scope. Uh, any uh, classes, uh, variables, uh, functions uh, in, uh, are, um, are accessible only in models. Uh, models can be created using the keyword export and can be used in another model using the keyword import. <coughs> And generic uh, allows to build reusable components. Uh, components can be called or used with a variety of data types. Uh, uh, in conclusion, uh, TypeScript um, is a great uh, tool for JavaScript developers. Uh, TypeScript is getting better and better um, uh, all the time. As for 2020, it's among the top 10 most wanted uh, programming uh, languages according to GitHub. Uh, Google um, made it um, um, the primary language for developing Angular application, uh, and uh, TypeScript is popular, trusted um, in the industry, uh, and um, 
not as difficult as uh, many seems to believe. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Uh, can I be first? <laughs> okay. Yes, of course. Um, have you ever used uh, TypeScript uh, TypeScript on your projects, uh, like on RS school projects? No, <laughs> in um, RS school I just practice uh, uh, plain J JavaScript. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, would you use uh, it uh, in final task? Uh, it uh, depends uh, on um, the group in in my on de depends on um, my so, group and our mentor. <laughs> and do you want to use it or not? Um, or you... uh, I want to try. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Uh, hello. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, the question uh, is uh, the following. As you may know, JavaScript does support all the principles of uh, object-oriented programming, as you may know. Uh, what about TypeScript? Does TypeScript support all the principles of object-oriented programming? Mm, mm, yes, it supports. Why? Can you explain why? Um, because uh, it uh, use, uh, uses uh, such concept, concept uh, as uh, classes and uh, inheritance uh, um, interfaces. And uh, first of all, actually TypeScript is uh, just JavaScript uh, behind the scenes, I mean, under the hood. Yeah? Mm, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm, okay. Uh, thank you so much, Tatiana. It was interesting. Uh, thank for you us. for. <laughs> <laughs> thank you and uh, for your patience. <laughs> um, it's okay. Don't be so boring. No, I, I'm just nervous. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I understand you. So, is Vladimir here? He's the next. Uh, today, uh, I uh, tell you about React. Um, with G6, uh, we can write uh, that loop. Uh, and uh, also, we can uh, create and use our own XML like that. Mm. Uh, here that G6 uh, looks like assigned to a variable. Uh, using, uh, using G6 is not uh, mandatory uh, for writing React. Uh, Babel uh, compiled G6 in the calls React create element. Uh, uh, these two examples are equivalent to each other. React create element uh, conducts some uh, check to and five bugs in the code, um, uh, but most importantly, uh, it uh, creates an uh, object similar to this. Uh, these uh, objects are called React Element. Uh, we can say uh, that they describe the result at, that um, uh, we want uh, to see on the screen. Uh, React reads uh, this object and uh, use them to construct and uh, maintain the DOM. G6 is, uh, is a to write and understand that uh, creating and depending many elements in Vanilla JavaScript and uh, is one of the reasons people love React so much. Um, a React DOM uh, render is uh, used to render a React element where document element by the root it is uh, mm, uh, root not DOM. Mm. Uh, React DOM uh, compares the element and um, its child tree uh, with the previous version and uh, makes only the minimally necessary change uh, to the DOM. Instead of uh, 
interacting with the uh, DOM directly, uh, we work uh, with its uh, lightweight copy. Uh, we can make uh, to the copy based on our needs uh, and uh, then apply the change to the real DOM. Uh, in this case, uh, the DOM uh, tree is uh, compared with its uh, virtual copy. Uh, the difference is uh, determined and uh, the uh, redrawing um, of um, that have been uh, changed is started. Mm. Components allow you to divide the user interface into independent um, reusable parts and uh, work with each part separately. Uh, conceptually, uh, components are similar to JavaScript functions. They, takes, uh, they take uh, arbitrary input uh, called props or property and uh, a return react um, element that describe that should appear on the screen. Uh, the easiest, easiest way to define a component uh, is to write a JavaScript function. Uh, you, can, um, you can offer um, Oh, sorry. Um, this uh, function is a valid React component because it takes a single prop object arguments um, with denotes properties uh, with uh, data and uh, returns React element. Uh, we call such components functional because they are literally JavaScript functions. Uh, you can also uh, use a class from ES6 uh, to define a component. Um, the two above components are equivalent in terms of React. Uh, elements uh, can also custom uh, components. Uh, when uh, React sees an element representing a custom component, uh, it uh, passes the J6 attributes to the components as a single object. We call this object props. Uh, for example, this uh, code uh, displays hello react on the page. Mm, the state uh, gives the components a uh, ability to respond to the, uh, the user actions, uh, server response, and um, other events uh, without uh, compromising the purity of the component. React components uh, have a built-in state object. Uh, the state object stores property values that belong to the component. Uh, when the state object changes, the component is uh, redrawn. Uh, state object in the site in uh, uh, constructor. Um, quick start. Uh, open uh, ID and write in terminal and X create React app. My app. Um, after installation is uh, necessary, go in new folder My app. Uh, the layout of future application will appear. Um, write and write in terminal npm start and uh, wait. E, and in your default browser will be open React app. Um, bingo, you can start developing on React. Proof mm. uh, of uh, the React. Uh, in the end, uh, I want uh, to know the following advantage of using a React. Um, you can uh, create components that look like custom and um, easily modify them. Uh, reuse HTML elements too quickly and uh, efficiently create user interfaces. Uh, using uh, virtual DOM allows uh, creating high performance application. Uh, the library is developed and maintained by highly qualified uh, developers and uh, has a large community. Thanks. Uh, thank you.
Uh, have you ever used uh, React uh, in your projects uh, in the ERA school? Uh, yes. Um, For which um, one? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, one project I uh, write in uh, React, uh, it is uh, fancy weather. Uh, and um, React is uh, React. Uh, okay, was it easier than uh, write uh, same thing uh, on uh, vanilla JS? Mm, yes. Um, Why? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I don't. Um, so, uh, was it mm -hmm. uh, more easy, easier to write uh, on React? Uh, in accordance with vanilla mm -hmm. JS? Mm -hmm. in, the start of, in, the, in the start of learn, I uh, write only function and uh, uh, it is difficult uh, will um, uh, composite uh, many, many function uh, and uh, uh, now, uh, write in React um, is uh, easier, uh, and uh, I write a uh, React component and uh, classes, and uh, uh, my application um, easily to write, easily to read code. Uh, okay, to, yes. and uh, did you use Redux? Oh, oh no! Uh, I uh, I don't understand what Redux, uh, and um, I don't uh, write, and I don't uh, use uh, this in uh, my uh, fancy weather. But um, in future, I use it. Okay, thank you. If uh, anybody has questions, please. Hello, thank you for Hello. your present. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, have you ever used uh, function components and hooks in React? Uh, have any use? Have you ever used any fun uh, function components and hooks in React? Do you know mm -hmm. what are they? Oh, uh, yes, I what use. What are they? Uh, yeah, okay, okay. And uh, as I heard, you have never used Redux. Uh, but do you know what is, what is it for, what it is for, and uh, why we should use Redux to have the ultimate uh, place of truth, so to say? Do you know uh, why, why it is used sometimes? Oh, okay. Um, Redux uh, um, no, will be uh, oh, easy uh, right code uh, because uh, in uh, simple React uh, necessary. Um, mm, Prohibit function in the components. Uh, so you want to uh, yes. say you want to say that if our application is growing to be very complex uh, and if we have many states, it uh, mm -hmm. may, yes, yes. may maybe mm -hmm. is better for us to have one single state, and if we are transferring our props across the components. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, the only role of the component is just to transfer a prop uh, below in the structure. Then we have to think about using Redux. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you uh, for presentation. Uh, could I know, mm -hmm. please, um, after learning uh, JavaScript, how it was um, to write an application on React? Uh, 
sorry, easily or not? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. No, uh, but um, I uh, before uh, don't uh, understand React and I don't uh, write React. And uh, and um, for understand, uh, I uh, I weakly understand React. Uh, it is difficult, but not difficult. It is easily and uh, mm, and um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I understand that it uh, was easy for you after jazz. You don't need uh, a lot of time to dive in, yeah? Mm, yes. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't understand your question. Um, uh. Okay, thank you. You already understand for my question. I asked about it, was it easy or not? And I understand you. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Uh, thank you, Vladimir. Uh, it mm. was um, nice to hear you, hear your presentation about ReactJS. So the next one uh, is Andre. Are you here, Andre? Uh, yes. Hello, hello. Let me test my okay. microphone. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Give me a second to prepare for presentation. Uh, okay, can you share with us screen? Yes, and maybe camera? Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Everything works fine, I hope. Sure. Okay, may I start? Yes, you can start. Mm, okay. So, hello again. Today I'm going to pretend that I'm MongoDB specialist and tell you some words about this database. MongoDB is a cross-platform document-oriented program uh, classified as NoSQL and uses uh, JSON-like documents with a schema. MongoDB is developed by, surprise, surprise, MongoDB Incorporated. So how did it all start? One software company called Tengen began developing MongoDB in 2007 as a component of Planet Platform. Uh, in 2013, Tengen changed its name to MongoDB Incorporated and focused their work on MongoDB. Uh, what's the difference between SQL and no SQL? Uh, as I mentioned, MongoDB is a NoSQL database. Before we dive into the jungle of SQLs, let's figure out uh, the difference between SQL and NoSQL. Um, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is a programming language that is used to manage data in a relational databases. Um, next in line, Next in line, no SQL. At first, uh, at first glance, this example seems familiar to JS developers because no SQL looks like JSON. This is fluff at first sight, isn't it? So what's the point? Uh, some people were brave enough to break the program's rule number one. If it works, don't touch it. And today we have the honor to behold an opening to SQL, no SQL. SQL is an old mammoth that has been developed in ancient times and uh, its influence is hard to overestimate. No SQL is a young flexible guy who is trying to move the old mammoth. We have examples of uh, both kinds of DBs, but the most interesting for us is the guy in the uh, upper right corner. Um, one of the main differences between these databases is that SQL uses specific language consisting of words, select something from somewhere where blah, blah. 
uh, while NoSQL uses an object-oriented approach uh, that is familiar to developers. And now when we understand what NoSQL is, I think it's high time to learn how to actually work with Mongo. Uh, and uh, we have two options. Download the server right on your PC or create a cluster online. And a few words how to work with both of them. Firstly, uh, we need to come to the official website mongodb.com and download a community server for your operation system. We skip a boring process of installation in order to not take time. After installation, we can start our DB uh, via command prompt. And uh, here are examples of, uh, of basic commands which we can use to check the working condition of our DB, such as show DB, show collections, and so on. To make our life easier, we can download MongoDB Compass from the official website. As you can see, it is a visual representation of previous comments from the terminal. Furthermore, we are able to use Compass for online clusters. And uh, to create an online cl cluster, we need to visit cloudmongodb.com. And after creating and setting up our cluster, we can uh, get a connection link to the database. Great, but before being called experts, we need to learn tools to interact with MongoDB using our wonderful JS. Of course, we want to process queries to the database using the backend. I will use Node.js and Mongoose. Uh, whoops, sorry, the wrong slide. I mean the other Mongoose. And uh, this is Mongoose, what I talked about. MongoDB, uh, I'm sorry, Mongoose is a popular library for MongoDB and Node.js. And uh, starting from this place, we put on smart faces because we jump a bit into coding. Uh, and in order to show your process of connecting to a database, I created a simple server using Node, JS, and Express. And this code, we import uh, Express and use it to create a server. Here we import Mongoose and then create an URI. Details is the name of the database that we are connecting to. Then we use the connect method for the connection itself. Uh, the following messages mean uh, we did everything properly. Next, steps, next step is to create a schema. The documents in the database will be inserted according to the schema we will define. In the same folder, we create a new file and name it, and name it model GS using the following code. This is a schema. The collection name is employees, and each document in this doc, uh, collection will uh, hold three fields, name, age, and location. And at the end of the file, we export the schema. We can create APIs now. We need a router to create road handlers, adding the following code in the server JS file. And link starting with slash will be captured by the router we created. Uh, and uh, this is how server file, server JS file looks like. Now we can create the APIs. The first API will insert data into the employees collection. So the router handler will make a post request. Uh, the route handler will be invoked when the endpoint local host slash insert data will be executed. And uh, to insert data, we can use the insert many method. The met this method uh, takes an array of objects as its parameter. Uh, we will see three documents in the employee collection. And uh, to invoke the insert many method, we will use the method we created and imported to server.js file. 
uh, we pass the array to the insert main method and um, now we can use the postman tool to test this endpoint and uh, as you can see the insert main method returns the document we were inserted successfully in the collection mm. Similarly, we can create another road handler to fetch the documents. The difference here is uh, insert of post method, we will make a get method and in, insert, insert of um, insert many method, we will use the find method. And uh, let's execute the road using the postman tool again. And uh, the link to the website is at the top, and yes, it returned all the documents. So it was a simple example of MongoDB in this application. Um, and here we created a server, then established a connection with MongoDB and created a schema. So it's time to add MongoDB to your CV. Thanks for your attention. And if you have questions, feel free to ask. Uh, thank you, Andre. It was a very nice presentation. I have two questions you. for you. First question is, what did you do before you decided to become a JavaScript developer, <laughs> front-end developer? I have been for a long time as a teacher in the middle, in middle school and then worked as a uh, software a, a QA, QA well, okay. engi engineer. I mean. Teacher of what? English. English, okay. And uh, you said a lot of good things about MongoDB, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about disadvantages? Um, it's hard to me to tell about disadvantages because uh, I, tr I tried both SQL and NoSQL and uh, my decision and I prefer to use uh, MongoDB because it's, for me it's easier to understand and easier to interact with. And um, maybe JSON look uh, document style is it's a uh, disadvantage for someone. Okay. Anyone else have a question? Uh, hello, thank you for your presentation. So finally, what is the difference between SQL and NoSQL databases? What's the primary difference between them? Um, as I mentioned, uh, the difference the whole approach to these databases. Uh, as for me, it was more easy to learn and easy to interact with the MongoDB because it, uh, it's useful to create um, new, uh, new elements in the object. Uh, I don't know how to dis dis uh, describe it exactly, uh, but if we have, for example, if we have a user who has the properties as name, uh, lo location, and so on, and uh, in the uh, uh, SQL databases, it's hard to add additional properties to that. While uh, in NoSQL, it's uh, very flexible and easy to add without reading the whole database or collection, I mean. <laughs> Mm, I mean, the primary difference is that the first uh, type is uh, mm, they are relational databases, SQL, yeah. and uh, exactly. no SQL databases are non not known exactly. in, in in their essence. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation and for your answers as well. Thank, thank you, you for your thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Andre. So, uh, you really should invest your time in WebGL uh, on and learning the frameworks if you wish to pursue the um, uh, web world game development. Uh, compare a simple spinning cube animation. 
Uh, Babylon.js would be just a few bytes. This is yeah, made with Babylon. Um, it can interact with uh, HTML elements and the standard uh, JavaScript events. And Unity 3D would be taken up about 20 megabytes with the same animation, load up forever, and use up the whole page. So you would not be able to add any other content but uh, Unity. So that's, <clears throat> that's really the differences here. And the 2D games. Uh, the 2D and 3D games are quite interlinked, but they have colossal differences uh, when it comes to development. And yes, there are numerous 3D libraries, but I want to focus on the vanilla right now. Um, so the, cam the Canvas and the API versus WebGL. And Canvas is really only for 2D games, and WebGL supports uh, 2D and 3D games. And the plus side is that it uses uh, hardware accelerated, accelerated uh, graphics. Basically, it's a JavaScript API that allows us to render interactive 2D and 3D graphics. Um, unfortunately, I don't have much time right now to go deeper into the, the versions of 1 and 2, but let me just mention that the version 2 is not supported by Safari, so you do have to uh, find a workaround if you have anything uh, that requires the second version. So be it Canvas or WebGL, uh, being buried under a wall of, uh, you know, bicycles and crutches is no one's dream uh, come true. So we have frameworks. And I paired libraries and frameworks and with 3D games because you really wouldn't be able, uh, I mean, you would be, but you really don't want to do anything vanilla with 3D games. Um, that's going to be just too complicated. The tale of two frameworks. There's really, um, there's a lot of them. There's hundreds of them. But the massive ones are Babylon GS and 3GS. The main difference is that Babylon uh, focuses on more on visualization of graphics such as uh, World of Warcraft. That's something that you, you can do in Babylon, for instance. It's made by Microsoft. It was introduced in 2013 and it goes with, uh, works on, Bab on uh, WebGL. Uh, it has uh, Babylon native, so it means it can be, can be cross-platform. And it has a node material editor. If you worked with Blender, for instance, you will know what that is, and that's really useful for uh, making 3D objects and models. 3GS came before WebGL, so it really is um, a great workaround um, with because you, you can use it with SVGs and HTML5 Canvas element in addition to WebGL. Uh, and the main uh, the main idea behind 3GS is uh, to create web graphics without focusing on any single animation niche. It's flexible and a great tool for general purpose web animations like logos or modeling applications. Again, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time to go into every uh, engine or library that I have listed here, but there, the, the, um, this is a link. And uh, again, if you look up the presentation, you can read all about this on, um, on the GitHub. And I just listed my, uh, my most favorite one that I've researched. And going into virtual reality and augmented reality, uh, this is really the newest niche added in early 2014. Uh, and um, it's made possible by web, uh, web VR. It's experimental JavaScript API that enables applications to interact with virtual reality devices like Oculus Rift, uh, Google Cardboard, and HTC Vive. And it all, all works in the web browser. And I'm gonna have a demo here. Uh, this is one of my favorites because it's really lightweight and I love the documentation. It's quite easy to navigate. And as you can see, all of this doesn't take up much space. It's quite fast, even on my old, old computer. Uh, and uh, really, if you want to create something, something like this, I urge you to look up A-Frame. It's a great, great library. And as I mentioned, I'll be leaving you with a little bit of resources. Um, it's, if you, this topic has led your interest towards uh, game dev and uh, anything related to Canvas, uh, these are great, uh, great handbooks. And the last one is even a video. I urge you to look it up if, uh, if that's your interest. So yes, thank you for your time. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, thank Hi. you, Katya. <laughs> uh, thank yeah. you for your presentation. Uh, wow, it was so stunning, and I <laughs> want to know that uh, your theme is quite unique and uh, clearly yeah. interesting. And how do you oh, think uh, JavaScript has future and can be a real competitor in serious game development? Uh, 
Well, JavaScript alone cannot be because really it's uh, it wasn't designed uh, with that purpose, and uh, we've seen its uh, growth with uh, all the other frameworks like uh, React and Angular. So, if we're talking frameworks, then yes, of course, there's future. Like I said, it really is a competitor against Unity and Unreal Engine, for instance, right now. Uh, so we'll see where that goes, but it depends on the frameworks again. Thank you. Uh, hi, thanks for your presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I, I have already my uh, made my decision about your English. That's great. Hablo español. Hablo español. Sí, sí, ya hablo castellano, o sea, español. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Okay. ¿Es también un requisito hablar castellano? Okay. Okay. So, I, 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 I actually thought you, you, you do speak Spanish, or, or do you? I, I have already made my decision. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, actually, uh, what I heard, oh, what I heard uh, is just enough for me. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to talk about your presentation, and I've seen it before. Uh, okay. I mentioned that you have uh, some uh, path problems, if you remember. Ah, oh, you just, yeah, me, hello. yes. Yeah, yes. uh, and mm -hmm. I would like to ask you about uh, the interactive uh, part of it. Uh, did it uh, uh, take much time to do uh, such thing? Uh, the interactives? No, actually, it's um, it's a feature in Reveal.js. It's called iframe. Um, I just saw the tutorial and I added the the links. It, it wasn't uh, all I made really was the the spinning cube. <laughs> uh, the rest was just uh, some links that I added to the reveal uh, presentation. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, maybe? Uh, so, Kate, thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. How do I stop this? <laughs> I'll stop share. Okay. Thanks. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So, uh, next one is Nastya. Nastya, are you here? Mm, okay, my theme is regular expression. Just uh, quickly uh, introducing this theme. Okay, so, well, I guess you have come across them before and they may seem to you kind of uh, hieroglyphs or chicken scratches in your code. But uh, you better know them because uh, regular expressions are extremely useful in extracting information in data validation. They are widely supported in programming languages such as Java, Python, JavaScript, and more others. And uh, they are just a cool patterns that have a huge impact on your code. So uh, it'd be easy to read for computers and sometimes for coworkers. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing to recognize when using real expressions is that each sign, each everything is essentially a character. And, and this character has a special power to match a specific tag, to do some validate things inside. Yeah, and um, well, you just should know that you can find out uh, uh, find out regular expressions every day in everyday situations like a bank checks your credit card number or YouTube checks your username uh, or even browser checks uh, euro request and more others. So just regular expressions are everywhere. Yeah, and um, uh, according to JavaScript, uh, there are two ways to create regular expressions. First way is to uh, create a variable like this, let var account yeah, so uh, when you create a variable, um, regular expressions will remain constant. And the second way is to use, to call a regular expressions constructor. Uh, yeah, and uh, in JavaScript, regular expressions is a kind of object, like a map array or something else. Yeah, and uh, uh, if you create a, a with constructor, uh, well, in this way, uh, this pattern can be changing, or you can get uh, the pattern from another way. Uh, 
Okay, so all characters uh, inside regular expressions can be divided by two groups, a meta character, which has a special meaning, and regular characters, which has a literal meaning. And they even look like letters, but with backslash. Uh, besides, um, uh, each regular expression consists not only uh, characters, but of flags. It's such kind of switchers. Uh, the most widely used flags are I, J, and Y. Okay, so what we can do with regular expressions, uh, there are a lot of methods and names speak for itself, like this. Um, okay, so how do regular expressions exactly work? Well, it has, it in giant uh, uses the following algorithm. For every position in the string, it tries to match a pattern to that position, and if there is no match, it goes to the next position. And basically, this algorithm could be greedy or lazy. Greedy here means that regular expression uh, will match as much as possible if it one matches. And opposite of them is lazy one, non-greedy, uh, will um, match as minimally as possible. Um, also, uh, you should know that regular expression uh, patterns use quantifiers. It's like super true. Uh, yeah, and um, well, the most popular quantifiers are question mark, asterisk, plus sign, curly braces, and a dot, which has a huge power. It matches any character except of new line. So, uh, just for example, uh, right here we have a simple sentence and we have two different kind of regular expressions. Uh, greedy mode and lazy mode. And uh, we have two different results. Uh, why do regular expression work like this? So uh, without a question mark, uh, a dot and plus character denotes any single character except a new line allowed to occur one multiple times. So in this game, in this case, uh, the regular expression uh, just match as much as possible it's the fun magic and uh, in another example with question mark uh well it stops after it uh, gets one or word in double quotes and then uh, just go to another word uh okay so uh, also you know what there is often more in my way more in one way to do the same thing uh, with the uh, help of specific characters. So like uh, in this example, uh, using the specific characters uh, with uh, square brackets, we could uh, get the same correct result because uh, square brackets uh, looks for a quote followed by one or more non-quotes and then a closing quote. Okay. Uh, also, uh, there is a shorthand for uh, matching a specific text uh, by using a dash uh, inside square brackets. So, like here in example, uh, square bracket zero dash six will match any single digit character from zero to six, and with a hat inside, uh, it will match any character except for letters in a range from n to six. Okay, next one uh, is a pair of quantifiers, hat and dollar sign. And uh, you should notice that, um, um, well, in, it is different, yeah? Like in previous example, when we have a hat inside the square brackets to uh, extract uh, some characters in a range except some characters. And here, uh, to indicate the start of, uh, of a line or of a string, uh, also, a uh, very useful pattern is the group of characters. Uh, consists of parentheses and characters inside. It will capture uh, a text like a group. Um, okay, uh, next one is a super tool for placing the charts inside. Uh, your text is back referencing. Uh, so, uh, back referencing uh, is just and uh, it's a name given to the action of matching. And uh, it means that we reference a, a captured match, save it in memory, and then use it 
in another place. Uh, okay, so next one is a tricky one, nested group. Uh, it was one is very tricky because it's very easy to uh, miss out the way, <laughs> uh, like in a deep, deep forest. And also, uh, well, uh, nested groups can overburden uh, your code, so um, even just slightly. So um, usually, programmers use them rarely. Um, okay. So yeah, like here an example or uh, a lot of parentheses inside parentheses inside parentheses. <laughs> it's a very tricky one, and I still can't understand very carefully, but it's a very useful um, pattern to do to uh, to use sometimes. Okay, what else? In my short introduce, I can um, recommend very recommend you very popular websites for experiencing. Regex 101. Here you can put your regular expressions, patterns, choose flags. Uh, and what is wonderful that uh, this website uh, offers you an explanation in the sidebar. Yeah, and uh, I even may notice that I uh, learn all regular expressions because of this, uh, just with help of this uh, web app. Yeah, so I really recommend you this. And if you really want to dive in uh, this theme, uh, so you can find several uh, books in the description in my uh, real presentation. So yeah, here you can see several books. So I guess this is all. Thank you for listening, for watching. So use regular expression, but don't go overboard for them. Okay. Okay, thank you for your wonderful presentation it was very interesting to listen to it uh, my question is can we use special characters in our regular expressions and if we can how can we do this uh, special characters yeah uh, like quotes uh, uh, question marks something yeah, yeah. like this what I guess. Uh, can we do this and if we can how do we achieve this just put inside our regular expression as i said before that regular expression consists of meta character characters uh, and um, flags and quantifiers so uh with quantifiers allows you to uh indicate how a preceding element allows to occur, how much this element allows to occur, one and multiple times or not. So you put this quantifier after a character uh, and you create a rule for this character like this. Okay, thank you. Any questions? I suppose now. Uh, okay, thank you, Nesta. It was cool. So, hello, everyone. My name is Yaroslav Shkov, and I'm 17 years old right now. So, I'm graduating from 11th grade right now, and instead of starting for my exams, I will try to tell you about ExpressJS. And let's start. And the first thing that I want to tell you about is history of ExpressJS. Just a few words. Uh, the first commit was actually made back in about the summer 2009. And then it was first published in NPM about winter 2010. So, and then in early 2016, the ExpressJS project was brought into the Node.js Foundation as an incubating project. So, it doesn't really change Express itself. It helps Express with governance. So, this war, the original founding PC members, and it hasn't changed since Express Foundation. So now let's dive into ExpressJS itself and what ExpressJS is. And like the definition says, Express is a fast and opinionated minimalist web framework for Node.js. Uh, that means that is a server-side framework and it is not comparable to client-side frameworks like React, Angular, 
or Vue. In fact, it can be used in combination with these frameworks to build a full stack application. So why you should use Express.js? Uh, the first thing, uh, it makes building web applications with Node.js much easier because without Express, you had to grab the URL manually, load the file, check the content type, and it was very tedious. And Express making handling requests very simple, and it is much, much less code. So Express is used for both APIs that serve JSON data, as well as backend applications that render page on the server. Um, it gives us full control of requests and responses. It's extremely light, fast, and free. And by far, it is the most popular Node.js framework. Like, if you want to compare to CoreJS or HappyJS, they're now in the as popular as Express. Um, and it's great to use with client-side frameworks, like, as it's all JavaScript. So if you're building a full-stack application with, like, React or Angular, you're still using JavaScript on the server side. So there is no need for multiple languages. So that's always an advantage. So... What should you know first? Uh, of course, the first thing you should know is basic Node.js and NPM. I'm not saying you have to be a Node.js pro, but at least watch a couple tutorials so you understand what it is and how it works. Uh, some other things that can help you out is knowing about HTTP, knowing the status codes, uh, because you are dealing with requests, you're going to have to send back responses. So it's helpful to know which type of response you should send back. JSON, because if you are dealing with buildings API and that stuff, I only recommend it's like for each map, filter, and etc. Error functions, promises, uh, all the new features of JavaScript. I would suggest getting familiar with that stuff. So let's make a basic Node HTTP server. So you're going to need to have Node.js and NPM downloaded, and we're going to add Express. So let's take a look at my directory. Uh, all I have is two files, packages on, it's configuration file, which was made by npm in it, and server.js, that is where I'm going to put JavaScript code and we just empty now. First, we should install Express, just type um, npm install save dev, save it like, a, save it as a dev dependency. And after that, our configuration file will look like this. Uh, so, the first thing I want to do is to create a web server. And by web server, I mean something that open ups, opens up a port and allows browsers to connect to it. And it is very easy with Express. So, the way to it is code from the node package is through the require function. Uh, this is like an input statement, import statement. So, and the funny thing that Express is actually a function and I can execute that function. So I execute Express and suddenly I get this web application. And the second thing I can do is say, hey, listen for common connections and write another line of code at that list in 8080. So I wrote a little callback here, nothing special, only console log to our Node.js and we're going to run this. And here we can see our console log. Now we open the browser and see this. So there is nothing there, but we can see that it's working. It's like, I'm listening, but I don't have anything to give you. And now let's make something cool. We can use an aspect of Express to host static files. Update use. It is Express ability to host static files, like HTML files, image files, movie files, all that sorts of stuff. So, but what we want to host, let's create a folder named the website, and then let's create an index HTML here with some stuff like two headings. Uh, so um, let's open it in a browser and we can see it's just there. So we have written a web server um, and this is all the code for our website. It's minimalistic. And so, okay. Let's create um, some kind of API. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to create it. And now we are going to create something that's called 
RESTful API. Of course, you could visit Wikipedia or other resources to read about that stuff. In a few words, it's just a style by which users can make GET requests and receive information back. So let's say you have a website about animals and your website is look like this, like animalsapi.com. So you might go to this and see that index.html file that is there, like in our folder called animals API. So, um, but what if you go, if, what if you want to go deeper and what if you're going to animalsapi.com slash about. So, and maybe you have a website directory, a folder called about with another index.html file. And when you go there, you will see that one. So uh, this idea of pass with slashes is something that you typically see to navigate through directories of a website. However, these slashes don't mm, just have to be directories they can actually signify a route. So for example, uh, what if I go to Animals API search mouse, and what if I went to this, and this is not actually directories, these are comments that I'm using to the API. And so if you want to handle a GET request, this goes to a specific route, I could say add.get slash animals, and a little callback here that's, that is called uh, send animals info. So now send animals info has two arguments associated with it, a request and a response. And here in code, I'm going to say next, response.send, I'm fond of animals too. Uh, so if the user goes to slash animals, rather than look for a directory of HTML, CSS, or JavaScript files along the path, this is a route that I'm going to handle programmatically. And I'm going to say, I'm fond of animals too. Let's check our browser, go to the route slash animals, and I see a photo of animals too. But there is no HTML page with nothing else, just code and response. So there is a lot of things you can do with this. But what if I were to slash search slash something? And here we need to go deeper. Rather than say slash search slash mouse, what I want actually to do is to handle specific route. I want if they go to search and then want to the second element to be a variable, something that changes every time. So here I'm gonna say column. Uh, so that indicates that the search, the search is a route followed by something that user enters and that will be here found in request. And now I can say there is some data associated with this, with this request, something that came beyond just search some type of animal. And I can say const data is equal to request dot parameters. So animal is a parameter. And now I can say, send this back uh, with my variable from request. And in response, I use that parameter. And let's see in the browser. And I could, I could put for, I could, I can do everything with that. I can put, uh, cat, I can put dog, and I will receive information, a string with that parameter. So I can add another parameter. And so let's add a number. Uh, then let's create a little for loop. I have added a little logic based on whatever number I get in. So I do that a bunch of times. And now we can see I'm getting both an animal and a number. And if I go to the browser and type search mouse 20, I will receive this message 20 times. So the reply is now based on what has been sent to the server. So this is a basic idea how a route works. Uh, so there is a lot of fun stuff that you can make with Express.js. It's very useful for development. So hopefully this gave you some insight on how to make requests handling, response handling, stuff like that. In conclusion, I want to say that Express is actually pretty simple. It's really just a routing plus a sugar there on the top of the actual Node.js server. So Express.js isn't actually a server by itself. It's a way that gives you a little bit of extra on top. And 
what you get by just doing like HTTP create server and node. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you for Hello, your presentation. Thank you very much. I have a general uh, question. I'm uh, Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I guess we agreed. Uh, I have a question. <laughs> I'm curious very much. Why did you decide not to share with us your face? Please, As could you repeat, could you repeat the question? Uh, my question is, why did you decide not to share your face with us like other students? Uh, because on this computer, I can so just like use my webcam. Uh, but from the other side, if I launch the other computer, I can do it. But suddenly oh. I use my notebook instead of my PC. Okay, it's just technical issue. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello. I have a hello? question for you. I have seen a number of phrases where you uh, told us how you are fond of dogs, uh, cats, uh, but uh, I also s I have also seen a phrase, I am fond of mouse too. Don't you know the plural of mouse? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my what question is, question? what is the plural form of mouse? Uh, mouses, okay, so yeah. Ma ma mouses, no, no, it's mice. mice. No, it's mice. Oh. Okay, thank you. I have a question for you, uh, and uh, as far as I see, uh, ExpressJS uh, is a framework for backend development. Yes. 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 And you're now studying at Frontend Developer School. Could you please uh, tell me uh, what's the difference between this? Uh, Developments, backend and frontend, and why did you choose a uh, topic about backend? Thank you. So I chose frontend development because I think that's my that's my first experience. So I don't really know I will develop in the more deeper, or I just will go and build full stack applications and being full stack developer. So that's my first experience. I mean, why did you choose uh, backend uh, as a topic of your presentation? Uh, I didn't know that ExpressJS is actually a backend or something with that stuff. I just like, um, from the bunch of things that I've seen, I think that is the most interesting for me. That is something I don't know and I want to get familiar with. So I tried. And you liked. Mm. I don't think so. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Yaroslav. It was interesting. Thank you for your uh, for being brave. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today I have an interesting topic to talk about, and it will be about keys. But it's not about real keys, it's about kissing. it's about one of the most popular principles in programming. Uh, keys or keep it simple stupid. Uh, this principle means that a simple solution is better than a complex one, even if the solution looks stupid. Uh, but sometimes uh, this principle can be confusing and people cannot understand um, the meaning of this principle in the right way. So let's discuss it, uh, why, why it's happening. Uh, when, we, when we read about KISS principle, we see the word simple. And what is happening in our minds? Hmm. Simple is easy, so this principle is easy to understand, easy to apply, or not really important. And uh, it would be wrong, because simplicity should be on the top of our main concerns when building an application and it's essential but hard to achieve and why is simplicity so important why do we need to learn this principle and the answer is changes software changes requirement changes changes in users interests and needs imagine uh, we, uh, you need to modify some piece of code you wrote a few months ago and you don't remember anything 
So you have to spend time to figure out how the system works, why did you need these methods, classes, and so on. And uh, there is the main advantage of simplicity. The simpler your solution, the less time you will spend to read your code, to, to understand it, to modify and extend it. Uh, and extend it. And uh, the advantage of simplicity is even bigger when the person who maintains the software is not one who once wrote it before. So his principle says to, um, to write a simple solutions because simple solutions are faster to implement. It's easier to maintain, uh, it's more reliable software and um, simple code is more flexible, easier to extend and modify. So, uh, what do we need to do to get this simple, stupid code? And there, is, uh, there, there are some main rules of case principles that will help us to keep our code simple. The first and the most important rule is do not try outsmart anyone. Uh, sometimes sometimes uh, developers try to show how smart they are. They bring a dozen of design patterns and invent clever ways to do simple things. In short, high complexity for simple functionalities. Uh, but we don't need to, uh, to be the smartest guy in the room. It doesn't make our code better and we don't need, uh, and we don't need to be a genius to, uh, to solve simple, simple problems. But this rule uh, doesn't mean that uh, we must uh, use only primitive technologies. If we have a complex requirements, um, our system will be complex too. Or, as you can see, the complexity of the requirements will be match the complexity of our system. Uh, the next rule is ACME principle, or oh, you aren't gonna need it. Have you ever seen or written code that uh, doesn't solve your present problems, but uh, you or your colleagues say it will be useful one day in the future and so on. In this case, we should say you aren't gonna need it. Nobody knows the future. Functionalities can be canceled or stay in backlog forever. And uh, some developers uh, can spend a crazy amount of time to be trying to be as flexible as possible for hypothetical features that will never come. So always implement things when you actually need them. The next rule is about dead code. Dead code is everything that is not used in your application. Uh, dead code is reason of a lot of questions like, is it useful? Should I keep it? Uh, what is purpose of it? And um, to keep our and to not confuse everyone and yourself, uh, we shouldn't be afraid. We shouldn't be afraid to delete every line of code we don't use in our application. The next rule is keep everything in your system small and obvious. Small means that you should drop down every uh, part of your system into small, into small parts because it's easier to understand, it's easier to read. And obvious uh, means that uh, we shouldn't use unnecessary dependencies, global variables and behaviors because they uh, make our system more complex and uh, behavior uh, is more unpredictable. So. Uh, let's look at small example here. Uh, and what do uh, and what do you think about this method? Is it okay or not okay? And I think it's not okay. Why? Because it doesn't follow our last rule. First of all, it's not small. The name is too long, and the body of this uh, method is uh, for sure is long too. And the second, um, there is unnecessary dependency between um, three independent actions. We can choose food without calling our dog and we can call our dog without feeding it. So to be, more cl uh, to be closer to KISS principle, I think it will be better to drop down this message into three small independent uh, methods and then it will be okay. <laughs> um, it was the last rule and let's summarize our key uh, rules. Uh, first, try to be as stupidly simple as you can. Don't try to be the smartest guy in the room. The second, 
code as close, uh, code as, close as possible to your immediate needs. The third, don't be afraid to throw away code. It's about bad code. And the first, keep everything in your system, small and obvious. So it was the main rules. And what is the result of this speech? What we should do next? Or what, what is our next steps? Uh, first of all, we know that simplicity is important. It should be on the top of our main concerns when building an application. The second, we remember the main keys, the main keys rules. Just try to remember the previous slide. And the third and the most important step is try to practice these rules. Uh, try to practice these rules to use this principle in real projects, in real programs, not just theory. And if we follow all of these steps, we will figure out this, uh, that this principle makes our life better because our code is stupidly simple. So I hope it was interesting topic for you and it will be useful in your future development. And thank you for watching and I'm waiting for your questions. All right, hello. Uh, you've mentioned, uh, well, first of all, you have a topic on KISS principles, yes? Yes. And you've mentioned Yagni principle, yeah? Yes. And yes. I didn't quite get the connection between them. Could you please emphasize this moment and make it clear? Um, okay. Uh, Agni principles say us that we shouldn't um, write something that, uh, uh, that doesn't solve our present problems. Because sometimes uh, we try to predict some future functionalities, but, uh, and, it's, uh, and it will make our system more complex. But, um, and we should uh, do only that things that, so, that will solve our present needs, our present requirements, problem, problems. Uh, and uh, the connection between Agni principle and KISS principle, that Agni principle helps to keep our system more simple. And it's about KISS principle. That, and simplicity is like um, um, the, I don't know, just Agni principle helps our, uh, us to, to achieve this KISS principle, I, I think. So it that, means that the Agni is uh, some kind of part of KISS? Um, I think uh, it's like help, it's like helpful uh, principle to, uh, to achieve KISS principle because in, program, in programming a lot of principles and uh, there are really um close to each other and sometimes it's uh, really hard to to try to understand which uh, which principles were and uh, yes i think it can be like part of his principle of the principle because okay don't just worry don't worry it's okay <laughs> thank, you. thank you okay thank you thank you for your presentation uh, as for Yagni, the first principle should be don't do anything unless you are paid for it. Uh, it should be so. Okay, uh, what is your English level as you may assess it? How do you think? Uh, my English level? Yep. Um, Actually, I think it's about B1, but my um, uh, certain no theory knowledge is better than my speech, but I'm trying to... So you have better writing skills, you mean? Uh, writing and mainly grammar, but my speech... <laughs> uh, is, speaking, uh, speaking, speaking. Speaking needs to be yeah. practiced. Speaking. Yeah. And okay, what about reading? Do, do, uh, what about reading? Do you have any difficulties in reading documentation in English? Um, I don't think so because, um, for example, in our courses we used a lot of stuff, and I read, uh, I read a lot of documentation in English, and I don't have, I didn't have any difficulties in it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much, Anna.
for this presentation. Um, and I have one question. Uh, how mm -hmm. to find a balance between uh, the desire for perfect structuring, like uh, if you are perfectionist uh, and uh, kiss uh, practices, how do you think? Uh, actually, I thought about it and I think that uh, nothing can be perfect because um, mm, I don't know, it's like ide ideal code, this ideal simple code and uh, I don't think that uh, anybody achieve this ideal simple code and everything is uh, okay in the structure and so on. Uh, but I think uh, we should uh, just remember about simplicity when we, uh, for example, when we uh, start to work on some projects because simplicity helps us to imagine the structure of our system, uh, maybe to think about it a little, about um, uh, dependencies and uh, other stuff. Um, um, maybe simplicity, uh, this principle is also helps us to refactor our code. Uh, but I don't think that anybody could uh, achieve an ideal simple code. Uh, it's like uh, magic, <laughs> really. Um, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, it was nice to hear your presentation. And uh, again, Konstantin, are you here? Hi, guys. I'm Kostya, I'm a student at uh, Rolimskom School, I do, would like to tell you about React. What is it, uh, why do we need it, and how to start using React in our application? React is a, a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. React was created by Jordan Walk, a Facebook software developer in 2013. React can be used to develop not only web applications, but mobile applications as well. Its goal is to provide high speed, simplicity and scalability. As a library for developing user interfaces, React is often used with other libraries such as Redux, GraphQL. React today is the most popular library among JavaScript developers. React is developed uh, and maintained by Facebook, Instagram, and the community of individual developers and corporations. Why do developers prefer React? Because it uh, works uh, rapidly and simple. Uh, why is React so fast? Uh, the main reason is the uh, use of virtual DOM all structure of a web page can be represented using the DOM. The organization of HTML elements and we can manipulate, modify, delete or add new elements. JavaScript is used to interact with the DOM. However, when we try to manipulate HTML elements using JavaScript, we may encounter performance degradation, especially when changing a large number of elements and uh, operation on elements can take some time. However, if we are working uh, from just code to with JavaScript objects, uh, the operation would be faster. To solve the performance problem, the concept of a virtual DOM appeared. Uh, the virtual DOM represents a lightweight copy of uh, the regular DOM and a main feature of React is uh, this library works with the virtual DOM and uh, not with the usual one. If you need to change the elements of a web page, uh, that the changes are first made to the virtual DOM. Uh, then uh, the new state of the virtual DOM is compared with the current state, and uh, if uh, the states are different, React uh, find uh, the minimum number of manipulation that are necessary before updating the real DOM to a new state and perform them. As a result, such a shame for interacting with web page elements is much faster and more effective 
if we work it directly from JavaScript with the DOM. Another feature of React is the user of J6. J6 is a combination of JavaScript and HTML code and provides a simple and intuitive way to define visual interface code. Remember how we create elements using JavaScript and how long it takes. Now you can forget about it. We can use the D6 and create elements directly in the code. It gives our code visibly and more logical. How it works? It's absolutely simple. We write text and put information inside. Then React transforms this code and save it in the memory as object. Uh, here is uh, an example of how I'm using G6 in my code, uh, creating text and adding uh, variables uh, to them. It's very simple and easy. How to install React? Uh, to install React, we need to go to the official website and click to get the started button. After that, we can install React using the CDN. But I prefer install React to with link React Creator React App. It's uh, very simple and creates uh, all necessary dependencies and also creates the basic structure of our application. After installation, uh, the structure of our application uh, will look like this. We have uh, to add uh, the components folder and start creating. It's absolutely simple. We do not uh, need to install the webpack and configure it. Uh, React does everything uh, for us. React based on components and React consists of components. We can create encapsulated components with their own state and then combine them into complex user interfaces. Since the logic of the components is written in the JavaScript, but not contained in the templates, we can easily transfer a variety of data throughout the application and keep the state outside the DOM. How do how we can compose our application on components? Obviously, our entire application consists of logically independent parts. For example, header, sidebar, article header, uh, article the text, etc. That allows you to make these parts fully encapsulated, uh, which makes it possible to use them again and again and uh, in our application. Rex has two kinds of components. Uh, there are functional and class-based components. What is the difference? Uh, look like an example. This is a simple component. It's very important to write import Rex as the top part components. If we want bound methods, we can bind method or method, uh, bind or arrow function. As you can see, the keyword class already appears here. If we, we can receive props in class components, we need to write the keyword this. Class components include a constructor, a render, and lifecycle methods. When hooks appears, appears develops, begin to use it in use a mainly functional approach for creating components. Uh, this is example show one of my components from the fancy weather task. Uh, this is a header components writing without using classes. It receives props and can use them directly in the code. If I really like this approach to building application. If early components had a state, we can use only class components, but then hooks uh, were added in React, we can state uh, can be defined in a functional component. It returns an array 
from state and functional that sets the value to this array, such as uh, this set, set state value in class component. There is also a very useful hook use effect. It takes a callback and array of dependencies. It works if one more dependencies are updated. Okay. I'm done. Uh, I don't know what else uh, to tell you. In the case of React, uh, better to write code using documentation and uh, Google than to teach theory. It will be better to understand React. If you have a question, you can ask me. I will ask and answer all this. Thank you, Kostya. Uh, can you say me, please, uh, have you re uh, write uh, any projects on React? My first project on React uh, was a fancy weather project. Uh, and how it was? It uh, was very difficult <laughs> for me to understand the game. It uh, takes a uh, lot of lots of time for understanding it. Okay, but you uh, have you completed fancy weather? Mm -hmm. In React, I like uh, the easy writing text tag in uh, components and put uh, in my uh, variables and function uh, inside um, text. Uh, no, we mean, uh, did you finish this project? Did you finish this project in React? Fancy weather. Yes, I finished this project. <laughs> I and glad. What's your mark? <laughs> What's your points for them for, for this? Uh, points there. How many points did you get for this mm. for this task? I I got. Uh, mm. Okay, it was maximum one. Uh, Twenty-five. Twenty-five points. Only twenty-five points. I take a, okay, take thank you. Of thank time you. Don't uh, worry, don't worry. The, everything is okay. Thank you, thank you. That's nice. Okay. So, Kosti, thank you. Uh, my name is Alex, and uh, uh, this is an, another presenta presentation about React, also known as React.js. And from my presentation, you will know. What is uh, React, why React is so popular, and React technical concepts and feature. Uh, let's start. Uh, React is JavaScript library for building user interfaces. It's not a framework because a React is not a complete solution, and we will often need to use uh, more libraries with uh, React to form final solution. Typically, React used uh, for developing single page applications. A little bit of history. Uh, React was created by Jordan Wolke, a software engineer at Facebook for internal needs of company. Uh, it was first deployed on Facebook's newsfeed in 2011 and later on Instagram in 2012. Uh, in May 2013, it was open source at JSCon US, and after then, React started to gain popularity. In uh, your screen, you can see growing popularity of React uh, from uh, 2013. Uh, to date, React is among the most popular components of JS. Uh, it is used by Facebook, PayPal, Uber, and other components which you see on your screen. Uh, so why React so popular compared uh, with other JavaScript components and frameworks? Let's look at uh, the aspects which provide uh, React popularity. Most users pointed at the following advantages. And uh, the first one is simple installation and easy to use. Uh, React was created for gradual adoption from the start, and you can use as little or as much React as you need. 
The second is user-friendly and positive learning curve. A learning curve is uh, the graph representation of learning something over time. In our case, uh, the speed and quality of learning are proportional to time spent. Uh, the next one is comprehensive documentation with many languages and huge community. The React documentation is available in uh, the uh, 17 languages and also translation into other languages in progress, including a thanks to the community. Uh, also, React used in many projects. Only on GitHub is uh, mentioned in uh, 3.7 million projects and uh, has a rating of 150,000 uh, stars. Uh, and the last one is React technical concepts and feature which provide app stability and high speed of work. Actually, this is uh, the most point because all previous aspects important only for beginners at the start of work with any new library. And all of these previous points can be summarized as user-friendly. Uh, so let's back to React technical uh, concepts. And here I would note a few things uh, that make React application really fast. And these are JSX, Virtual DOM, and a React reconciliation algorithm. Uh, let's start from JSX. Uh, and JSX is an extension to the JavaScript language which compares HTML, CSS, and JS syntax. Uh, JSX provides a way to structure a component rendering using syntax framework for many developers. In the React concept, uh, the rendering logic is connected with another UI logic. Uh, with the following dependencies. How events are processed, how uh, the state changes over time, and how the data is prepared for display. Uh, React stores uh, these dependencies in Unis called components that contain markup and logic. You can put any valid JavaScript expression inside uh, the curly braces in uh, JSX. Uh, in example on your screen, we can see the result of function uh, format name into h1 element. React doesn't require using JSX, but uh, React components are typically writing using JSX, uh, and most people find it helpful. The next one is virtual DOM. Virtual DOM is a representation of document object model. Virtual DOM consists of elements of the smallest building blocks of React apps. And unlike browser DOM elements, uh, React elements are plain objects. But React elements are lightweight, uh, cheap to create, and immutable. On your screen, uh, you can see a similar DOM object with only basic properties. And here, uh, you can see a React object with all properties. Uh, all create element. Uh, after create an element, uh, you can change uh, its children or attributes. Uh, when you update and render this element, you create an element uh, based on uh, the previous. A React can render uh, the element on uh, the server side or client side. And uh, the last one is uh, React Reconciliation Algorithm. Uh, this algorithm compares all elements with uh, them previous status and all updates on the DOM elements which were changed. Uh, whenever uh, the root elements have different types, React will rebuild new part of tree from scratch. And uh, when the tree is rebuilt, the old DOM nodes are destroyed. When comparing elements of the same type, React looks at the attributes of both a save base DOM node and all updates are the change attributes. And when React uh, the comparing children elements, it just iterates over both list of children at the same time and generates a new whenever there is a difference. But inserting an element at the beginning has a worse performance. For example, converting between uh, these two trees on your screen works poor because uh, React will destroy all elements and rebuild uh, part of DOM uh, from scratch. Uh, 
uh, for solve of this issue, React support a K attribute. Uh, when children have case, uh, React uses uh, the K to compare children in the original tree with uh, the children in uh, the new tree. Uh, if we add an, uh, a K to our elements from previous example uh, to here, we can make uh, the tree conversion efficient. And now React knows uh, that element with K location is a new one and add in uh, the tree only this element without rebuilding all structure. Thanks to virtual DOM and React reconciliation algorithm, React applications has a high speed of work. Uh, that's all. Uh, this is at the end of my presentation. Uh, of course, React is a huge topic, and in this uh, 19 minutes, I just try to tell a small part of information about React. I hope you did not find it too boring. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, your questions. Hey, man, classical question. Uh, did you use React in your practice? Yes, I have a uh, small, uh, uh, a little experience with React. Uh, I write uh, twice a study project on React. I helped uh, my friends on the work with React uh, and uh, uh, my last uh, my last task uh, from uh, Rolling Scope School, Fancy Weather, in uh, the React. Did you like it? Mm, uh, some company, uh, some components in the React uh, is very interesting. The state uh, that's uh, virtual DOM is very interesting thing, but in uh, uh, another. Uh, Libraries, for example, view. Uh, I uh, know that things uh, oh, view contain these things, and view uh, not uh, worse uh, than React. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have a question. I have uh, seen in your CV that you've been studying at uh, Virginia Beowulf School. I. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Of course, from Arno Tale, uh, uh, guys from Moscow, and uh, it's very interesting course. It's intensive. Uh, from one month, you uh, learn in English. You uh, made uh, some uh, tasks, and it's very interesting experience. Uh, uh, they have uh, they have projects, Battle for Britain, if you know. Yeah, uh, I mean uh, it's online course. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Good evening. I have a question good as evening. well. I have a question as well. So, what is React? Is it a library or a framework? How do you think? Yeah. A React is library. React is library because because uh, uh, it's not complete solution and uh, it's flexible tool, and we will often need to use with React another library to form final solution. Uh, if 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 uh, uh, we use uh, React Native, uh, React Native is uh, is framework. But React or React is library. Okay. Uh, have you heard about Node.js? Node.js, it's. Uh, uh, mm, I know uh, that a thing uh, is a server side uh, of uh, Java, uh, provides server side of JavaScript, uh, component of MyronStack. And very uh, useful. Thing. And uh, do you know what is Node.js? What, what is it? A library, a framework, or maybe a runtime? Mm. Uh, I I uh, I think uh, I know. 
how do I say in English? Uh, среда, среда разработки. Environment. Uh, it's a runtime actually. Um, unfortunately, I don't. I don't know answer. It, it's not. It's not about answering, providing correct or incorrect question. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I need from you is to hear my questions and answer. That's it. There are no incorrect or correct answers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your answers. Uh, thank, thank you. For I'm sorry. One little point. Component, not component. Please. Com okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, oh, I have the same uh, same mistake. Uh, don't worry. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, next one is Alexander too. My name is Vasenko Alexander. I am from Kazakhstan, Almaty, and I am glad to present make presentation on the blockchain. It's not my presentation is not about like architecture of blockchain. It's more maybe about obstacles where you can which you can meet during the um, blockchain development or maybe using. But let's start. Okay. Uh, well, maybe now it's not so like massive hype about blockchain, but it really was. And there were so many like questions and expectations of blockchain, like it can solve inequality or make all data secure forever or make everything like more efficient. And maybe some things are happen, or something, uh, some things didn't happen. And let's just answer some questions and see what obstacles you can meet during the blockchain development. Uh, let's start with like small basics. Okay, what is blockchain? Uh, and many companies are use word blockchain to mean some sort of magic device, but which all their data will never be wrong. But such a device, of course, doesn't exist because when the come when real come when real world come into play, things are changing. So, what is blockchain? Well, technically speaking, blockchain is a linked list of blocks, and block block is a group of ordered transactions. And maybe you can think blockchain is a subset of a database, but with some new a few additional properties. The main thing, the main thing that distinguishes blockchain from normal database is that there is a specific rule about how to put data into the database. That can that is it cannot conflict with some other data, but is already in the database consistent that the word that one of the main words of the blockchain and it's append only, it's immutable. And the data itself is locked to an owner, it's ownable. It's replic replicable and available. Finally, everyone agrees on what the state of the things in the database are, canonical, with the sort, without the third party decentralization. So the main aspects of the blockchain are consistent, immutable, ownable, canonical, and decentralized. Uh, it is the, <clears throat> and the last point that really is the holy grail of blockchain, decentralization. Decentralization is very attractive because it implies there is a no single point of failure. There is no single authority will be able to take away your assets or change history to suit their needs. The immutable audit trail where you don't have to trust anyone is the benefit that anyone playing it's the whole, um, uh, trust anyone. It is the benefit that everyone that's playing with this te technology is looking for. This is the, but this benefit it comes with a great cost. And so we move to the things you have to be aware of when you start like uh, doing things with blockchain and development. Creating creating a rule constant system is not a really task. A small bug can corrupt an entire database or cause some database to be different than the other ones. Of course, a corrupted or split database no longer has any consistency guarantees. Furthermore, all such systems have to be designed from the outside to be consistent. And there is no 
move fast and break things in a blockchain. That it's very modern, like agile uh, way of developing things could be very harm to the blockchain ecosystem. So you should really, really start design from the beginning. And when you go to production, changing is could be very, very hard. If you break things, you lose consistency and the blockchain is corrupted and forces. Maybe you can see that you can fix database to, to start at the start and moving on, but uh, it wouldn't be easy as you can do it in centralized way. Uh, the blockchain has to be a public source that's not under the control of a single entry. You should remember that it's decentralized. Or, and the entire effort could be very, very expensive. So, uh, also you should uh, keep in mind that user role is very different from the things which you are used to. Users are sovereign. They can be really good as companies don't like the ability of having, having user data in the first place. This can be bad, however, if the user is misbehaving. There is no way to kick out the user that is spamming your blockchain with frivolous data or has figured out how to profit from your blockchain ecosystem. And this misbehaving user can cause a lot of inconvenience to other users. And unlike in centralized centralized service. Refusing service is difficult because no single entry has an authority to kick anyone out. The blockchain has to be impartial and enforce the rules defined by the software. So if the rules are insufficient to deter bad behavior, you're out of luck. There is no spirit of law. You still have to deal with malicious or misbehaving actors, possibly for a very long time. Also keep in mind that upgrades, they are not so easy as like in any other application. Now when you like download from App Store any software, you could be forced in like months or in two months to get a new version. But here it, things don't run this way. A forced upgrade is not an option. The other players are on the network have no obligation to change your software. If they didn't, uh, they, uh, to make an upgrade, you have a cons consensus from all players of your blockchain. And each version or new feature in your blockchain and software adds a lot to the test matrix and length the time of release. Uh, and if your centralized server, the blockchain doesn't get you anything that you can do a thousand times cheaper than in central thousand cheaper than in centralized base. And remember, if you make a decentralized service, there wouldn't, wouldn't be you in your trolley decentralized service. Just like share some trends from Gartner about where blockchain war, unfortunately it's end of 2008. But anyway, uh, the graph, uh, understanding the timelines, shows that many modern industries are trying to use blockchain to solve their production problem. And every year, every year new industries appear to begin the exploring blockchain. However, so far, no industry has reached the plateau of productivity or even a slope of enlightenment. And the second one is technology as blockchain is a technology. Most modern blockchain technology are also on the way of discussion, we can see here. But not because there are new technologies, but because industries are examining them for applicability, for their data structure, the volume and the speed of the profession. They are looking for ways to use blockchain technology to increase efficiency and reduce their costs. And the last slide, which I want to share with you, is Amara's law. And it, say, it says that we're trying to overestimate the effect of a technology in a, short, in a short run and underestimate the effect in the long run. As an example, uh, we, now the smartphone is the like, main aspect of your life. And there was a time 
when long these phone calls were very expensive with terrible, with terrible quality and reliability. Now, look what your cell phone does for you and what you can do with your cell phone. What you, what you and other people criticizing the current state and application of this technology fail to understand is the influence of new technologies on one another and creating new applications. The executive that are already thinking about implementing blockchain will be a few steps ahead of ones that don't, that don't because they understand the difference between solving short-term issues versus having a long-term plan, plan for future needs. That was the end of my short presentation. If you have any questions, I would like to, I would be happy to answer them if I manage. Uh, thank you for presentation, Sasha. Uh, so could you share with us in what sphere you work? Is it banking or something similar? Yes, uh, I'm a, I work at Home Credit Bank. Uh, okay, and what position uh, in this sphere? Developer, software developer. Oh, okay. And uh, why you um, choose this uh, topic of presentation? Well, uh, there was like two main themes among the topic. It's about like technology, Singular, React, HTML, and some other things which are not related to technologies. That, that is my second try in RS school. I was at the previous quarter and the previous one was about the 3D, the 3 gs library. Uh, this time I just choose something else not related to like applied technologies, more about like this hype things. And for me, I just try to search some things and, uh, and answer the question, what is blockchain? What obstacles can you face it? And what is it about? And is it a real thing and how is developing and if Bitcoin in if, if if the Bitcoin is the only thing where blockchain is a real stuff. Okay, thank you for um, this wide <laughs> answer and for your presentation. Uh, it was cool. Uh, I may say that you're answering okay. better than you read. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen that you've been reading during the presentation, and yes. I may say that you speak uh, very flu quite fluent and nice, and you shouldn't be, I mean, nervous or something like that. Uh, you have nice well, English skills. Uh, yes, my, well, I agree with you. Uh, the, the part of my like nervous and why I read all these things because the theme and the topic for me it's quite new. Maybe it was a little my like mistake, and when the things and uh, new for you, new for me, uh, and you like don't know the the beyond the the words you are using and how it's really working, or the, how the really things happening in this theme. It's just making a little bit nervous because you don't know what will be the next. Yes, yes, and that's why, I always, just, uh, that's why. That's why I if always. I choose, uh, mm -hmm, okay. It's, I just did things like more challenging for me because there are like more, it's the better way to, new, to know uh, new words and to make your presentations better than just using the same like pace of uh, public speaking, I would say that. Okay, thank you. Mm, thank okay. you. Uh, next, uh Next speaker is Tatiana. Uh, so hello everyone, my name is Tanya and I would like to talk to you about dry principle in programming today. So I would like to start from a short game. You just need to guess who said that. I choose a lazy person to do a hard job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. Do you have any ideas? Uh, it's Gennady. Steve Jobs. Oh no! <laughs> uh, giving a little hint to you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Bill Gates. But it's cool interactive. <laughs> oh, Bill Gates! Oh my God! Yes. I was I was so close. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, you was close. So uh, it was really Bill Gates. And I decided to start from this quote today because for me, the topic of my presentation is closely related to laziness and logic, of course. So what is drive? Uh, there is a principle in programming, which means, um, which is dry, and it's an acronym, and it stands for don't repeat yourself. Uh, the main idea is to reduce repetition of code or avoid code duplication. There is also another principle in programming. It's opposite to dry principle, and it's called wet programming. Uh, write everything twice. So uh, whenever you write your code, you should always ask yourself, haven't I written this before? And if your answer is yes, I think it's better to stop and think about what you can do with that. Um, you can think of your code as a clause. So everybody knows that um, dry clause is easier to store, to maintain, and to manipulate. For example, you don't uh, you don't want to store wet clothes in your suitcase, right? Because it will create unpleasant smell and it will increase the weight of your baggage. So whenever we talk about programming, you can think about your code as a cloth and you should always av avoid wet programming. Let's look at a few examples. I took very simple examples just so all of us could get an understanding how dry principle works. So let's say that we have an array of uh, fruits and we need to print all of these elements to the console. Uh, of course, we can do it just using console.log and we all know that. And it's okay if you have like one or two elements, but um, imagine that you have an array of 100, el 100 elements. So in this case, it will be a lot of duplication everywhere and it's not right from technical point of view. So um, what we can do about that? Of course, we can use loop for that. Uh, we will get the same output, but we will write less code and spend less time for that. Uh, let's look at another example. Let's say we have not one uh, and already three arrays. And we have the same test. We need to print each element of each array to the console. We already know that this approach is not okay. Uh, so we can use loops here. But is it code, is that code dry enough for us? Because uh, we can see that we use the same for each loop uh, three times. So in this case, we can replace it with function. So we can wrap this loop into the function. And we just need to call this function for each array uh, which elements we need to print. So uh, using dry principle for me, uh, it's just refactoring your code and uh, using loops, functions, for example, to avoid code duplication. So what are the advantages of using dry principle? The first one is, of course, of course maintainability. Um, this means that dry code is easy to maintain. It's easier for you to make changes or fix any errors because um, let's go back to the previous example. Let's say that we need to print not only the name of each element of the array, but uh, we would need to add some phrase to it. For example, um, let's say we need to see this is the next element of the array and then the name of the element. So if we're using loops, for example, in this case, we need to change each loop. So we need to make changes three times in this case. But if we use a function approach, we would just need to change it one time on the 10th line in the function itself. Uh, the next advantage is readability, because dry code usually easier to read. Reusability. It means that you don't need to write the same logic all over and over again. You just can use the code that what was written before, but uh, this code performs the same operation that you need right now. Of course, uh, dry principle saves you time and money. Testing. Um, here I would like to talk about unit tests because it's obvious then uh, the less functions you have, for example, the less 
unit test, you need to write. So if you have wet code, you just need to write more uh, unit tests to cover all the functions that you have. But you need, you need to be very careful because, uh, of course, dry principle has also some pitfalls and you need to be aware of them. The first one is that not all code needs to be merged into one piece. What does it mean? It means that uh, sometimes you can have um, two pieces of code and um, whether you need to merge them into one piece or whether to leave them like that separated, uh, you, it needs to be thought over carefully because um, these two pieces of code can be can look the same, but it can have a little difference in them. And of course, don't overdry your code. It means uh, that uh, overdried code, um, it has a lot of um, columns to follow. So it will be harder to read your code. And also, I would like to say about naming your variables or functions here. Because if you cannot say uh, what the variable for or what the function uh, has to do based on its name, then it means that your code is hard to read and it's hard to change it later. So uh, you may have a question, when do you need to dry up your code or when you need to just leave it like that? Well, uh, in this case, you can use rule of three. What does it mean? It means that sometimes it can be okay to write the same logic two times, but when you write something third time, you always need to think and it's time to reflect. It's time to think and uh, fix the duplication your, in your code. And uh, in conclusion, I would like to say, so if, uh, when, when you write your code, you should always look back to see if there is any way you can dry it up. Thank you. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, thank you. Uh, can you tell me, please, uh, do you use uh, dry principle in uh, your RS uh, school uh, task? Um, I would say I'm trying mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and as a junior developer, it's easier for me, for example, to write something, some logic, to understand that it's work, and then look back to my code and to see uh, where I can see the, the same uh, lines of code and how can I, for example, um, create a function of them and just to use this function in two or more places. So it's hard for me to, dry, to write dry code uh, right at the beginning now. Okay, and um, uh, have you ever overdry your code? Yeah, sure, <laughs> I think so. Uh, you know, it's time when you uh, try to overdry your code. I mean, you try to dry it up, but a few days later, you just need to follow so many logics that you understand that it's better not to do it here. So, okay, thank you. Anybody else uh, has questions? Guys? And where are you from? I'm from Belarus, from Minsk. You're right now in Belarus? No. Can you please tell me where are you? Yeah, I'm living in Philadelphia, United States now. And it's so what, cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and how yeah. <laughs> and what was your, I mean, way to America and why are you there, not here? I just got married and went with my husband to the United States. So. I see, I see. <laughs> and, uh, Okay, I just wanted to ask about your situation there, but I won't. Uh, and okay, and what do I think about your English uh, level? Um, I think it's okay, but it's not enough. Um, even if you live in the United States, you need to use English each day um, to improve it. And because I, I don't, talk to Americans each day, it's hard to, to, to improve my level, you know, 
Do you feel lack of practice? Uh, don't, don't you talk to your husband? He's Russian, so I talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's a problem. Yeah, but, yeah but, but it doesn't help. <laughs> so we now we have coronavirus here as everywhere and you know because of this quarantine time i don't talk english at all for a few months so yeah i would say i i feel the lack of practice sure but uh, your presentation is very nice thank you thank you thank you for your time guys for your weekend time <laughs> uh, thank you tanya uh, it was cool uh, it was pleasant to hear you I can't go anywhere in any other tabs of my browser and just was uh, uh, listening to you because uh, your manner of uh, speaking is uh, so, so pleasant. I like it. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you so much. So now um, Stanislav will present. I hope you are not tired. I swear my presentation will be soft and easy so uh, i'm going to tell you about agile agile software development what is it in business agility is the ability to create and uh, respond to change it's a way of dealing with an uncertain environment uh, software development is an extra uncertain and competitive area where the speed of implementation of new ideas and meeting clients expectations are critical and agile provides both uh, low time to market and client orientation that's why agile is so popular as popular as some kind of uh, religion by the way agile really looks like a religion Let's see, the apostles, the commandments, these uh, prayers for agile during daily stand-ups, a lot of uh, artifacts and rituals, and uh, millions of believers all over the world. Does it remind you of anything? No? Okay, but what makes agile specific? And uh, the answer is the values. Does anybody know what these prophets hold in his hands? This is Moses. <laughs> it is manifesto for agile software development, uh, where four essential values of uh, agile are declared. And these values uh, say that the focus should be more on individuals and interactions instead of uh, process on tools. Working software is more important than comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration is more vital than contract negotiation. And the process should respond to change rather than following a plan. Uh, pretty short and clear. I think Nothing of this uh, requires my explanation, but one thing I want to point out that all these statements are not about one item substitutes or excludes another. Uh, no, it's about priority. Mm. I want to say that actual and uh, comprehensive documentation, for example, is a great thing uh, that uh, helps a lot during development process, post-release support, refactoring, and so on. But when we choose what to do first, perfect documentation or usable product, we prefer the product. In addition to the values, we have uh, 12 principles of Agile. Uh, you can briefly take a look at them on the slide. All of them are about uh, communication, collaboration, uh, high qualified and cross-functional team, personal responsibility, and uh, reacting to a changing environment. 
let's compare agile with a traditional approach also known as waterfall we have a comparative table let's go to each criteria and the first one organizational structure iterative and linear an iteration in the context of agile is a time box during which development takes place usually an iteration uh, takes from one to four weeks and iteration is a kind of uh, full cycle mini project that includes all stages of development process starting from planning and design uh, to testing and delivery but an iteration has deal only with a small part of functionality not the whole project when and when iteration ends a new iteration begins with uh, a new part of functionality and all this process repeats in waterfall model we have uh, a linear structure where every next uh, stage begins only when previous fully completed this whole project there are no iterations or partial implementations and our clients get their product at the very end user requirements and involvement of clients now, permanent input of user requirements uh, with frequent delivery of the product in agile provides a high level of uh, client involvement and makes uh, connections between clients and developers more clo makes closer when in waterfall product when in the waterfall model the main source of clients requirements is uh, so-called uh, requirement specification as an appendix to the contract and if this specification is not uh, detailed enough the final product may not meet clients expectations model preference and business processes taking into account uh, high uncertainty agile can set uh, strict rules and uh, processes because new requirements may need new processes and new models of uh, interactions adoption becomes a key feature of business uh, process in agile when in waterfall model uh, business processes are more formal and uh, more bureaucracy takes place effort estimation uh, because of uh, high qualification and uh, experience of agile team they make uh, effort estimation by themselves effort estimation takes place at the beginning of each iteration and uh, efforts usually measured in uh, so-called story points uh, in waterfall model the only person who provides estimates is project manager and uh, efforts estimates in hours and the last one reviews uh, in agile reviews take uh, place at the end of each iteration and uh, when team members uh, discuss uh, what was good what was bad what kind of change they need to to their processes to make them better uh, the team interested in this kind of reviews because it helps to make uh, interactions better and whole job more comfortable and uh, in terms of waterfall model reviews may take features of routine reporting for the customer as you can see Agile is very different from a traditional approach, and these differences give us next benefits. And the first one, flexibility. Uh, when it comes to making change in the product or process, Agile is much more flexible than waterfall. 
agile focuses uh, on the project and not uh, on the process. And if you uh, if customer needs change, we have no problem to tune all our processes to meet updated customer's requirements. And the second one, transparency. Agile keeps uh, processes transparent. Uh, their clients, team members, uh, management are actively involved uh, in development process. All team members see the progress from the start to the end, and uh, everyone known everyone known what uh, another does. All is clear and transparent, and uh, it makes uh, interactions more effective. Ownership and accountability. In the agile methodology, every team member shares a part of ownership of the project. Uh, each one plays an active role to complete uh, an iteration within estimated time. And uh, high personal, personal responsibility ensures more quality product. Feedback. Agile welcomes feedback. Uh, with help of feedback, Agile team can respond to customer requests and uh, deliver a better project. And the last one, handling with uh, complex projects. Uh, because of the high collaboration and cost functionality of the team, uh, they can handle more complex projects with many interdependencies and factors. One more pleasure thing is that you can be agile in different ways. Uh, you can do your business according to the agile values and principles using different practices. Uh, the most popular practices that follows agile are Scrum, Kanban, and external programming. As you can see, Scrum is uh, Scrum takes first place with more than a half. And uh, the second place take uh, some sort of uh, hybrid of uh, Scrum, Kanban, and external programming. Where we can use Agile? Agile looks good not only for software development. There are many industries uh, where Agile is used professional services, financial services, insurance, government, healthcare, almost everywhere where uncertainty may, may take place. And uh, for the end, so some useful links. Uh, AgileManifesto.org Agile uh, is a primary source of the values and principles of Agile. AgileAlliance.org. Agile Alliance is a non-profit organization dedicated to promoting the concepts of Agile software development. And the last one, stateofagile.com, is the most comprehensive Agile statistic. That's all. Thank you for your attention and may the Agile be with you. Uh, thank you, Stanislaw. Uh, and I have two questions for you. How do you think? Uh, what are pros and cons of estimation in RS school? If look by agile side. Mm, can you rephrase, please? Uh, it's about uh, deadlines. Uh, is it good? Uh, the, uh, is the way how it... Uh, exists in uh, RS school is good or not? <laughs> How do you think? I think uh, it's uh, very good because um, RS school um, teaches um, from the very start, almost from the scratch, their students. And uh, students, if they want to get some knowledge and practice from scratch, uh, they need to have some discipline and deadlines and uh, penalties for breaking the deadlines is a good way to 
stimulate discipline in students, I think. And, and don't you think that uh, it's not enough time for uh, this huge tasks like uh, English for kids or something else? Uh, what's your opinion? I think that uh, previous semester um, have more strict uh, deadlines and comparing to they com comparing to previous um, semester we have uh, normal deadlines and uh, if you want you can finish your task uh, in term okay thank you for your opinion this is not the first time you're enrolled at a school uh, no, uh, I am first uh, time in our, our school, but I uh, see these messages in Discord when uh, some students uh, pray for um, move deadline uh, some days uh, forward. And uh, this answers uh, from students from previous semester that uh, uh -huh, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Stanislaw, I see that you have an uh, economical background and yeah. something uh, with sales and management. Um, why did you decide to study front-end development? As far as I see, you could, be, you could get success in management, in IT management also, and your uh, topic you've, cho you've chosen uh, says that you're good at something management stuff. Oh, I don't think that I'm really good in management stuff because uh, all my professional background is a uh, background uh, in terms of uh, state enterprise. And um, it's some kind of my economic and my management experience uh, in this enterprise, they doesn't affect me well, I think, and I, I'm not good enough in management or economic. Uh, I so. see, I see, okay, okay. Uh, I don't have any question. Maybe, maybe anybody else? Uh, well, uh, hello, I have a question. Well, can you please explain the meaning of your GitHub name? It's from Zigland? Right. Okay, it's a very old story. Uh, it's time when Counter-Strike 1.0 five or 1.6 released and we with all our game plays uh, play in that game and uh, there is a powerful gun named desert eagle uh, with short deagle and digland is some kind of uh, the land of desert eagles and eight is uh, uh, Allusion to, uh, I think, Greek uh, god of uh, death, something like that. Oh, okay, I get it. Thank you, thank you. I suppose that's it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's, thank it's... you so much. Okay, thank you uh, all for your slow. time, and especially for your answers uh, to our questions. So next one is Yevgeny. Hello, uh, my name is Yevgeny and I'd like to introduce you uh, to Web Analytics and its main system, uh, Google Analytics. Uh, let's start. Um, what is uh, Web Analytics? According to the definition uh, on Wikipedia, Web Analytics is a measuring, collection, analysis, and reporting of web data for purposes of understanding and optimizing uh, web usage. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, 
um, web, analy web analytics allows you not only to work on uh, improving uh, websites, uh, but also to work on optimizing the budget for online uh, promotions. Mm, okay. Um, basic uh, steps of the uh, web analytics process. Um, uh, first, it's collection of data. Uh, this stage is the collection of the basic elementary data, usually. This data accounts of things. The objective of this stage is to gather uh, the, the data. Uh, processing of data uh, into information. Uh, this stage uh, usually takes counts and uh, makes them rations of the still. Uh, maybe uh, some counts. The objective of uh, the stage is to take data and conform it into information, into information uh, specifically metrics. Uh, next uh, step is developing KPI. This stage focuses on using the rations and counts and uh, infusing them with business strategies. And last is formulating online uh, strategy. This stage is concerned with the online goals, objective, and standards for the organization. Um, these strategies uh, are usually related to making money, saving money, and increasing market share. Um, okay. Let's talk about uh, the varieties of web analytics and the subject uh, of analytics. Site traffic analysis is statistics, trends, absolute and relative indicators, uh, analyzing data from e-commerce. Um, it's uh, average check, popular products, Usability analysis, uh, analysis of click density, conversion paths, uh, analysis of the behavior visitors on the page. Uh, it's interaction with form performing micro and macro conversions. Benchmarking, it's compression with uh, general trends and competition, uh, competitors using independent platform and to end analytics. It tracks the user's uh, full path from viewing ads uh, to the um, complexion a transaction. Okay, uh, nice. Uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, web analytics systems. Uh, there are uh, lots of uh, systems uh, for example, Google Analytics, PWIC, Yandex Metrica. Uh, but let's uh, take a close uh, at Google Analytics as the most popular service. Uh, this service um, allows analyze user behavior on the site. Also, that's required to connect to the system is to install small uh, JavaScript uh, code on the site pages. Oh, let's get to know it better and start use it. Uh, installation. In uh, first step, uh, with your Google account, uh, we can log uh, into Google Analytics and go uh, to the uh, admin tab. Mm. On the uh, first state, uh, step, uh, we uh, set uh, the name of our account. And on the next step, uh, we need to set uh, the website name, uh, say, uh, enter a web page address, uh, set industry category, and reporting time zone. On the next step, uh, we need to get tracking ID uh, and uh, we uh, need to insert it inside uh, the head tag. Mm -hmm. 
on uh, this step, uh, we are setting goals. Uh, it's a very important step because here we set uh, which user actions and interactions we need to track. Um, uh, duration of stay on this site and uh, we can set uh, a value of some interactions users uh, with our site. For example, a click on button of order. And after we'll be able to track information uh, in real time. Uh, for example, source of location, uh, as we see only one person from other visited my site. Uh, not the best result, of course. And after, we'll consider most successful projects. Uh, let's talk about uh, tracking plan. Mm, conversion is not a simple result between the number of visits and the number of orders. Trying to maximize conversion, uh, we need to analyze uh, the movement since uh, user appear on website explore how it behaves on it until after or some actions. It's uh, three ba basic steps. Acquisition, involvement, and transformation. Uh, the acquisition is based on construction, awareness, and interest of users. Behavior is a stage uh, on their interaction with the company and the conversion occurs when the user implements the goal of the campaign. Um, now uh, let's speak about uh, some kinds of reports. And first report is reports uh, from section acquisition. It's the most important report uh, for people who engaged uh, in generating website traffic. Uh, responsible, <clears throat> for example, um, for ordering, positioning, advertising campaigns. Uh, here we'll see which channels uh, the traffic comes from alone or with the most important parameters, such as number of inputs, bounce rate, number of conversions. Uh, used to compare uh, the efficiency of different channels, marketing, and check uh, from which sources uh, come, uh, comes the most uh, valuable customers and conversions. Uh, this helps you decide uh, what to focus your marketing efforts on how to manage your advertising budget. It's very important to correctly identify uh, traffic <coughs> sources. Uh, reports uh, from section behavior. Um, behavior reports help you understand uh, how user use the site. Uh, information about uh, using behavior uh, the site will be useful to understand about uh, how long uh, users are on the site, uh, which page uh, spend uh, the most time, and uh, which sites uh, you visit. Uh, what sites attract visitors the most? Uh, we can answer this question based on the three uh, following indicators. Uh, time, of uh, time on page, it's the time uh, spent on the site. Bones rate is percent of outputs, uh, information that uh, can uh, indicate how much the site is interested in the user. And percent of exits, uh, this uh, value tells us how many percent of users left the site after visiting a particular page. And behavior flow uh, show how visitor navigates on uh, our site, uh, from what page to what uh, our users go and uh, what page the user often leave. Mm. Okay, and uh, reports uh, from uh, section converting. Uh, this is an excellent report uh, for show the state of our business. 
These include conversion rate, number of trans transactions, transaction cost, average, or the volume. Uh, highly recommended uh, for periodic compression, year to year, uh, month to month. Uh, you need to remember the seasonality. Well, uh, we considered uh, the basic requirements uh, that are faced. Uh, web of the analytics examined its main tool google analytics uh, registered on the service and reviewed the main reports um, thanks for your attention yes thank uh, you thank you uh, uh, Vara, keep going. okay uh, could you please say uh, what competitors uh, does google analytics have uh, what uh, competitors? Yeah, the same products and same type of products uh, in the internet. Maybe you know some of them. I just want you to mention them. Oh, uh, competitors. <laughs> Concurrent. Ah, oh, oh, thank you. Uh, it's Yandex Metrica, PIVIC, uh, these uh, companies uh, were um, checked on the presentation. Uh, could you please tell me uh, this web analysis, um, which sphere is it about? Is it about developing? or maybe management or, so, or where is it from oh uh, no uh, this uh, from uh, commercial it's uh, more uh, useful for smm marketing uh, market share uh, mm -hmm. for okay market. and uh, uh, here you study development and you've decided to um, to choose a topic uh, connected with more, more uh, about ma oh, marketing. So what was uh, your mm, reason to take this? Mm, because uh, it uh, can be useful uh, to understand uh, where we need to uh, check uh, our uh, check our customers uh, uh, it's uh, help uh, understand uh, what uh, need uh, <clears throat> uh, what uh, we need. Okay, to, okay, okay. Uh, uh, don't don't worry. Uh, don't be nervous, please. I mean, um, is it about business or about development? Uh, is uh, uh, more. Uh, about business, uh, but uh, we are developers and uh, we uh, need to understand uh, how it works and uh, uh, how we uh, can do it uh, uh, to make it uh, more comfortable for our customers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Evgeny, for your presentation and answers. And uh, so that's all. Thank you, guys. And uh, who have, uh, I've got uh, to the end of this definitely interesting day. Uh, it was so much information, cool people, <laughs> good English, uh, like middle way English, <laughs> warm up in question session. So, and I hope to see you tomorrow, fresh and open-minded, for a new wave of information. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.